teriyaki chicken with seishu to drink. Enjoy your meal. Yes, the good stuff. No doubt about it, teriyaki chicken fares the best with this white rice. Matter of nonsense, teriyaki. This pork loin cutlet is quite clearly what pairs the best with white rice. I can't listen to this. Huh? Curry rice is best. The truth is located right there in the dish's name. Curry rice is obviously best suited to rice. Give me seconds! Pork cutlet rice bowl! It cannot exist without rice. Delicious. I'm talking about what goes best with white rice. The dishes you've mentioned are in a different category. Are you truly implying curry rice does not contain white rice? This man is blind, aren't you? Another bowl! Make haste! Well, give me one of those to try. I shall taste it for you. Let it cool. I will do no like... such thing. <laughs> I have no patience for your buffoonery. But teriyaki, how else am I to ascertain whether or not your uncultured claim is an accurate assessment? <laughs> hey, put that down. Don't eat my food. Don't eat oh, mine. So you won't get attacked <laughs> then? <laughs> Tragedy. <gasps> Isn't that bad? In fact, let me try another bite. Calm down, gentlemen. You're starting to get a little rowdy in here now. I don't tolerate violence in my restaurant. So if you're going to keep this up, well, I'll never cook for any of you again. Huh? <gasps> Shall we all just try to enjoy our meals then? Yeah. Thank you very much. Enjoy your trip, my queen. I have arrived, master. Yes, welcome back. And what would you like today? Do I need to say? I request the same dish every time I visit you. The beef stew, naturally. I shall begin with just one bowl. You got it. Beef stew, coming right up. Thank you for your patience. Here's your beef stew. Ah, this aroma. It smells of heaven and does tempt me to no end. But I must savor this jewel. Delicious. Oh. Oh. 
As always, the broth and the vegetables are unparalleled. Master, more of the same. You understand, yes? I do, of course. It's all ready to go whenever you're ready. Farewell. I'll come again. I certainly look forward to it. See you next time, then. Welcome back, my queen. I trust you enjoyed it. Yes. this? Someone from the other side, no doubt. Uh, where am I? Uh, 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 I let myself in, I'm sorry! I am, um, I'm sorry for that too! No, no! It's okay, try to calm down. Uh, Why don't we just start with a name? I can't believe I wandered into a magician's manor. Um, my name? I'm so sorry, my name is Aletta. So tell me, how did you end up here? Oh, I, um, it's real weird. See? So you're saying you thought my restaurant was a dream? No, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Anything else? Um, I guess, yeah. 
I'm sort of not a human being because I'm actually a demon. So, um, as proof that we have the demon god's divine protection, all demons possess an inhuman feature of some sort. Horns, a tail, scales that cover their body, poisonous blood and sweat, a part of the body made from see-through slime stuff. It manifests in various ways. Even if one of our parents is maybe a human or like a half-elf, it doesn't matter. We're always gonna be born with the god's blessing somewhere, and that's whether we like it or not. My blessing isn't all that impressive, though. It's just these small black goat horns. I'm not like most demons. My physical and magical strength aren't any greater than your average human girl. About half a year ago, I decided to leave my hometown and move to the royal capital city, a human city. I hid my horns, found a place to work, and was making a decent enough living, too. But then, one day... I saw my horns at the inn where I was working, so I lost my job. After that, word that I was a demon spread through the city like wildfire. It was awful. They make it really hard for a demon to find work in the royal capital. Before I knew it, I'd completely run out of money. Now I'm staying in these old ruins where even the most impoverished people refuse to live. At least I've got it to myself, though. Interesting. Mm, sorry, I'm really, really sorry. Don't be. At this point, I couldn't care less about the corn potage you ate. However, I think I might be as famished now as you were earlier. What was your name? I think it was Aletta, right? Oh, yes, sir. Will you be sticking around for breakfast, Aletta? Mm -hmm. No, I can't, but thank you for asking me. I, I still don't have any money, and I could never, ever forgive myself if I caused you any more trouble than I already have. I'd actually prefer it if you stuck around and joined me. It'd only be a staff meal, though, no money required. Mm -hmm. It would be free? I wouldn't feel right being the only one of us to get to eat something. Besides, food always tastes better when there's someone to share it with. All right, I'll stay. And thank you very much. No problem. Give me just a minute. My breakfast special. This is something not included on the regular menu. Wow, look at that. This man's really good at cooking. Unfortunately, this is all I can offer you at the moment. Try to bear with it. You ready? If so, hustle up. Oh, yes! God of demons is good, God of demons is great. Let us thank him for this food by his blessings we are fed. Uh, please just forget I did that. Oh, I hope everything's okay. Don't tell me I made something you're not a fan of. No, it's nothing. Never mind me, I'm just being silly. Uh, is this heaven? That's delicious too! And this thing... Uh, uh, it's so good! <laughs> I suppose I've gotta be one lucky cook to have someone eat my food this eagerly and enjoy it so much. I don't mind making more. for this you're welcome glad you enjoyed it everything was delicious i have a question aletta you mentioned a bit ago that you were looking for work didn't you yeah i did say that and were you a server by chance i mean when you were at the inn did you wait tables at all uh, um yeah then how would you like to work here once a week i could use someone literally once every seven days huh the work is from dawn until late in the night You'd be waiting on tables and clearing away the dishes, basic stuff. As far as pay goes, how about we treat you the same as a kid in college? Uh, actually, let's go more than that. Ten silver coins for a full day sound good? What? That much? And just for waiting tables? Right. Well, it is about a 14-hour shift, including breaks. That'll be pretty rough if you're not used to it. Working here will be a lot of work. Oh, and I'll feed you three meals. They'll be simple staff meals, though. Nothing terribly fancy. Yes, I'll do it! Please, please let me! Please hire me! All right, then consider yourself hired, Elena. Now, I know this isn't a lot of warning, but do you have some time to stick around today? Yes, absolutely! That's good to hear. 
can show you the ropes ahead of time, then. Sure. Oh, that's a good answer. Now, where to start? <clears throat> Wash up in the shower room. I can show you how to use it if you don't know. I'll provide you with a uniform and shoes. Wash up? Standard. A Wash shower? Up shoe size. Okay, I get into it like this. <laughs> oh, that feels so good. I think I'm supposed to use this magical device to clean with. changing so do i look okay <laughs> yeah you pass muster oh are the shoes the right fit for you yes they are they fit me perfectly great then let's move on okay why don't you start at that table mm. is there anything wrong my queen there has been a recent addition to my treasure. You mean your spell? Indeed. I shall return soon. My queen. Unbelievably amazing, but I probably should still find a second job. I would really prefer to sleep with a roof over my head. I'll make it happen. Tomorrow's a new day. New day. No need for concern here. None of this world would dare damage a part of my precious treasure. None would be so foolish. already yes i am thanks for everything you're welcome i take it there was no treasure to be found in this run downtown after all i wouldn't be too sure about that <laughs> right a treasure hunter can never reveal the location of their treasure see ya several doors that connect to another world. 
Another? You mean I'm in another world? Well, it looks pretty normal to me. Although, not normal, too. <laughs> I get that, but it's fairly run-of-the-mill on this side. How about it? Won't you stay and eat? Oh, and the food here is to die for. <sighs> we only just opened for the day, so we've got time. All right, I'll agree to that. Wonderful choice. Please, go ahead and have a seat wherever you like. Fascinating. Food from another world? I wonder what I'm going to be served. I really hope they don't give me something weird. Here's the menu. It's in the Eastern Continent's language. Oh, that's fine. Great, then have a look. Take as long as you need. Uh, what's that? I did not order any water. Fresh water with lemon is always on the house. What? The refills are free as well, so help yourself. This restaurant is so strange. Uh, it's cold and delicious. Hmm. I think I know what to expect from things like stew with cow's meat, but I don't know what the rest of this stuff is. Uh, the special's cheaper than what's on the menu. That'll have to do. Have you decided what you want to order? Yes, I'd like the daily special, please. Great. The daily special it is. That should be right out. Wait a second. Change your mind? No, no. Just wondering what the special is. Uh... Oh, let me go ask real quick. Um, excuse me. You asked about today's special? Huh. <laughs> I guess it must be fate. Minced meat cutlet. Hope that's okay. Uh, minced meat cutlet? It's very good. And it was also William's favorite dish. Oh. I'll have it for you in just a minute, ma'am. Uh, hey, you. Um, yes? Do you know what tomorrow's special is? Um, no. Actually, the door to the restaurant only appears once every seven days, so... I was right. Today has to be the day of Saturn. Huh. Then why, William Gold? Why choose to live in a former mining town during your last years? Wait, could it be because the food here is even better than the classy restaurants in the capital? Here you go. One minced meat cutlet meal. Fascinating. This is definitely cuisine from another world. Well, enjoy it. on bread and soup are free, too. If you want more, just let me know. One more thing. The minced meat cutlet tastes even better with some of this sauce and lemon juice squeezed over it. All right, I'll be sure to try that. Thank you. Take your time and enjoy. I'll start with soup. Oh, wow, it's delicious. This is unbelievably soft. Excuse me, could I get seconds of the bread and soup? Okay. Who is that? 
She's a new hire. It's her first day. Um, it's very nice to meet you both. Another man to meet Cutler. All right, coming right up. <laughs> oh, that was exquisite. I'm so glad you liked it. Thank you for your business. Also, ma'am, could I ask you to take this? Uh, what is it? Take out minced meat cutlet sandwiches. Uh, William always ordered these sandwiches to go after he finished his minced meat cutlet meal. You seem to enjoy your meals so much that I, well, I made it out of habit. Please take these back with you and don't worry about it. They're on the house today. You sure? Yes. Why don't we just say they'll be on William's tab? Oh, well, in that case, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> We look forward to serving you again. Oh, and before you go, hmm? about William, do you know how he... I hear he went peacefully. According to his journal, I guess he was pretty irritated that he wouldn't be able to come here anymore, though. <laughs> Is that so? I'll see you again. Looking forward to it. So, we have ourselves a minced meat cutlet, too. What's that mean? It's not complicated, just the way it looks. Hmm? Ah, uh, yes, I understand. The second. Come to think of it, I've not seen him in years now. Good old mincemeat cutlet. I see. All things come around again, eh? The legendary treasure hunter's secret. His last hidden treasure. <laughs> it's a hidden treasure worthy of William Gold. Captain Heinrich, sir. There's a visitor for you. A visitor? Who? He asked for you by name, sir. He called himself Tatsugoro. Are you sure? The real Tatsugoro has come here? I couldn't confirm whether or not it is truly him. But he's exactly as described in minstrel songs. Understood. Let him in. Hm. Tatsugoro is the name of that foreign fencing master who arrived from the Western Continent. He's renowned as a great warrior even here on the Eastern Continent. Among those who've taken up the blade, there's not a soul who doesn't know of him. What is he doing here? It could be an assassin using his name. Tatsugoro, sir. Send him in. <laughs> How do you do? You might know me as Tatsugoro. I trust you will be kind, Lord Salomon. I am at your mercy. There's no mistake. This man is him. Please, lift your hands, Sir Tatsugoro. I've heard much about your exploits. Please, come this way. What brings a legend like you to this humble fortress in the countryside? A fair question. An acquaintance of mine asked me to deliver something you left behind. It can't be. I remember running as fast as I could almost three years ago to the day. Only the stars and the moon were there to light my way. And for long, I surpassed the no. limits of my stamina. I knew if I continued on like that, I would fail to complete my mission. My strength was declining rapidly, and I had no desire to lose my life in those wild lands. However, I could not afford to collapse there, for I had a mission of grave importance. Humanoid, moth-like monsters with four arms and wings living in the Duchy's forest, called Mothmen, had taken to the sky in droves. Of course, those of us stationed in the fortress were tasked with watching for monsters evacuating the forest, and we fought resolutely to stop the Mothmen from their flight. But between the poisonous pollen they spread, their claws bearing down on us from above, and more than anything, their overwhelming numbers, the odds were against us. We had to inform the castle of the dire situation immediately. We were desperate for reinforcements. I was an excellent rider, so I was chosen for this essential mission. With a secret message to the state in my pocket, I flew from the fortress during a moment's opening that my comrades risked their lives to make. It shouldn't have taken me very long to reach the castle after I left. My horse collapsed along the way, though, foaming at the mouth as he fell. It must have been afflicted with the Mothman's poison before we departed the fortress. I abandoned my horse, and carrying as little as possible, ran for the castle on my own two feet. I reached my limit before I could get there. I was weak, out of energy. I was so hungry. 
I'd eaten enough before I left the fortress, but by a full day later, I was starved. My stomach was painfully empty. In my attempt to ready the horse as quickly as possible, I failed to pack any food for the journey. Oh, great god of the sea and water! I beg of you, give me strength! I'm saved! Welcome. Is it just you? Are you alone? I must claim my rights as a knight of the duchy. My name is Sir Heinrich Seliman. As a citizen of the duchy in this cabin, you will provide me with food and water. Do not disobey. Of course. Uh, Take a seat and wait just a moment. I'll have something out for you soon. First, let me grab you a damp towel and some water. Yes, very well. Oh, that's right. Uh, Question. Can you read the Eastern Continent's language? Yes, indeed I can. Perfect. I'll be back in just a minute. What is this little cabin? Hey, who are you? You're no ordinary pioneer. Pioneer? What are you talking about? This is a restaurant called Western Restaurant Nicoya. It's a restaurant? All the way out here? I'm not entirely sure what door you took to get here, but from what I gather, there are doors connecting your world to this one. You speak nonsense, man. If you don't mind having a seat. Uh, yes, fine. To be honest, I can't blame you for not believing me. But the details aside, this really is a restaurant. Now, I can offer you anything written on this menu. Uh, just whenever you're ready to order. Menu? Work. What are you babbling about? <laughs> well, if the penmanship isn't too bad, guess anything will do. As long as I can fill my stomach, that is. Uh, shripe? Could it be the same creature they catch in the port town from which I hail? It's difficult to transport without spoiling even to the next village. Could this be the shripe I haven't seen since I left my hometown to join the knights? The shripe I haven't tasted for years now. Do you know what you'd like to order, sir? Uh, this. I'd like to try the fried shrimp. Fried shrimp? Coming right up. Will bread be all right for your side? Oh, yes. Can this strange man truly serve me shrimp? So cold. How is there ice out in the middle of nowhere like this? Well, this feels rather pleasant, too. Thanks for your patience. Here's the fried shrimp. I have to recommend trying it with our special tartar sauce. Take your time and enjoy. Refills on bread and soup are always free. Huh? Let me know if you'd want more. Is this the shrine? The menu spoke of it being coated with breadcrumbs and fried in oil, but... No matter. I must try a bite and see for myself. Hmm. It's certainly pleasing to the eyes. This is shrine. And it's even meatier and fresher than in my hometown. It falls apart in the mouth with an easy crunch. The fragrant coating made with what must be the best wheat is soaked up decadent oil and yet refrains from an overpowering taste. The perfectly cooked shrimp releases lightly flavored juices with every chew. They simply meld together as one. Oh, that's right. He recommended that I eat it with a tartar sauce. Is this it? It appears pleasing. <gasps> What is this marvel? Excuse me, master. Another plate, please. Sure. That was fast. I guess you're a fan of the fried shrimp then. Great. <laughs> oh, God who rules the sea and water, I thank you for providing this incredible meal. Bless this restaurant. <sighs> that was delicious. Blast it all. I'm not carrying any money. I cannot leave without paying the man. I know. Master! Yes? How can I help you? I would like to settle up my bill, but I need a favor. I'm sorry, I have no money. But I will give you this instead. Next time I come here, I will pay you the money I owe. Please accept this collateral until that time. No, sir, please, I can just put it on your tab. It's fine. Unacceptable! Uh -huh. This is my way of showing my sincerity. Worry not, man. 
I swear to you, I will come to this place again. Please prepare some more of your fried shrimp upon my return. I have urgent business and must take my leave immediately. Wait, sir, before you go, the door only appears once every seven- Farewell. After that, I was able to make it to the castle before daybreak to inform them of the crisis in the duchy. Seeing the gravity of the situation, they mobilized the castle soldiers immediately, and the duchy narrowly escaped certain doom. As a reward, I was given this fortress. Ten days later. <gasps> Impossible! How can the restaurant be gone? Hmm. What was that place? It was no dream. I know that for certain. This is the sword I gave him. It's been gone from my hip since that day. How? Who is the restaurant's master? He's an acquaintance, as I said. Acquaintance? What are you telling me? Can we... Indeed. It is as you are undoubtedly thinking. <laughs> now, you mentioned there was a door close to here, did you not? The one you took near the fortress last time? What? Would you like more fried shrimp? How does tomorrow sound? Luckily, tomorrow is the day of Saturn, so... Fried shrimp? You're telling me I can eat fried shrimp again? Yes, once every seven days on the day of Saturn. <laughs> I'll have fried shrimp, please. Oh, what's with that guy? I think he must be a customer. Yes. Welcome back. <laughs> it uses night sauce, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what is this dish called? I just threw together what I had on hand. It doesn't have a name. It's not on the menu, so don't worry about knowing. We should offer this. But you'd have to name the dish first. Putting aside its menu worthiness, what name would you choose? Hmm. Ah, I'd call it Knight's Pasta! You would, huh? Huh? Thomas Alfade, the former proprietor of the Alfade Company, dealt in a variety of ingredients with a focus on wheat. Widely accepted as the company's restorer, he elevated wheat noodles, once thought of as a peasant food, into a staple fixture on nobles' dining tables, effectively making the Alfate Company the kingdom's most prominent trading empire. He invented a variety of sauces as well, thus greatly upgrading the status of pasta dishes, which had only used simple seasonings before. People purchased the Alfate Company's pasta and pasta sauces in droves. Thomas became lauded as the genius of culinary innovation. However, Thomas had a secret. The key to that secret lay beyond a very special door. So, that's the door then? The door that will take us to another world? It is. And I think we're ready to go now. Grandfather Thomas, are you telling me the truth? This door does seem rather odd. In fact, I've never seen it in the company cellar before. I worry it could be dangerous. <laughs> Don't be, it's perfectly safe. What's over there isn't so different from here. Although it's important to know, the Outfit Company owes a great debt to the shop on the other side of this door. We're indebted to them? What kind of shop is over there? It's a restaurant. One to another world. A restaurant to another world. Uh, uh. Welcome and hello. Hello. Oh, um, I'm Aletta. It's so nice to meet you. Have you, by chance, been to this restaurant before? Yes, I have. The master here. Yes, come on in, Thomas. If you'll just give me a minute. If it's all right with you, we'd prefer to wait for him at a table. Wherever you want. This is incredible. I've never seen most of these things before. Hmm. You're certainly new. Uh, yes, hello. My name is Sirius, and... Well, thank you for all you've done for my grandfather. The boy's much more polite than I am, wouldn't you say? I'll be bringing him with me from time to time. Thank you in advance. I see. There's definitely a resemblance there. <laughs> you think so, huh? I'll be back in a couple moments with some coffee for both of you to start with. What's coffee? It's kind of like a very strong tea. Dark black with a bitter flavor. Pretty good once you develop a taste for it. Plus, it gives you energy. Well, finding it mysterious. Yes, we're really in another world. That we are. I take a good look around. You see the decor, the layout, and so on? They all deviate some from what's considered normal and commonplace in our world. I see what you mean. It's true. <laughs> Thank you for.
for waiting. Here's your coffee. Oh, good. Much appreciated. <laughs> so what do you say? Shall we drink? But first, pass me the sugar so I can show you how I like to flavor mine. Oh, yes, sir. Look at this sugar. This has to be very high quality, don't you think? It's so white. of that bag we brought along with us. Understood. But we didn't bring all that much. I wouldn't think such a small amount of ingredients would be enough to be useful to a restaurant like this one. Not normally. From what I understand, though, they're for the master to eat himself. He eats them? The restaurant's master has them all? Yes, apparently. He uses them to research flavors. His predecessor did the same thing. Research flavors? Yes. With good reason. Our restaurant's flavors are decided by Japanese tastes. Um... To simplify it, let's say the tastes of humans from another world. Luckily, the disconnect between the two is small, but I find the difference compelling. He says he prefers to adjust his recipes in order to make them as palatable for us as possible. You mean he goes out of his way to do that? He can't be making much of a profit then. To him, it's not about the profit. He says what he enjoys is making people happy. He likes to bring his customers joy through good food. That sounds nice. Thanks for waiting again. Huh? All done, and everything I needed was in there. Per usual, I'll treat you to a dish, so feel free to order anything. Same goes for your grandson. My regular, please. I'll have an extra large serving of spaghetti with meat sauce. Well, serious, do you want to try my favorite dish? Yes, sir. That sounds great. Right. Two large orders of spaghetti with meat sauce it is. Thank you for your patience. Here's your spaghetti with meat sauce. Grandfather, it's very... I know, but it'll make sense once you eat it. Now then, hurry and dig in before it gets cold. Thinly sliced mushrooms crushed in lightly roasted nuts, Arani sautéed in a flavorful oil, not to mention the variety of herbs. We still have a long way to go to reach this, huh? It's delicious. The savoriness of the superior oil from the meat simmered in sauce explodes in my mouth. The beef and pork are so tender and flavorful. It's like they were raised for the express purpose of this dish. Frying and stewing them at the same time makes the different essences of both meats mingle incredibly. Together, they create a taste neither could produce alone. And this stewed vegetable of another world used as the sauce's base. It's been simmered and crushed into a liquid, giving it a sweet sourness and an unbelievable abundance of sumptuous flavor. This bright red sauce pairs well with the meat, highlighting the beef and pork even more. Although, the vegetable used in this sauce, I'd swear it was the same as the marments that our company discovered in a remote region and cultivated exclusively. Unless... What's your opinion, Sirius? Uh, Is the pasta of this world to your liking? I don't understand it. Why are they serving a dish with a flavor profile we have yet to produce? <laughs> uh, it can't be. <sighs> Grandfather, no. Did you? I did, and I'd do it again. They call me the genius of culinary innovation, but the truth is, it's all a sham. I liked it here, and I wanted the chance to eat these dishes on the other side, too. I can't believe this. Come on, look at this food. Let's keep eating. This green cylinder contains a very fine cheese. It's been grated all the way down to a powder. Sprinkling it over the meat sauce mellows the taste, and this red juice is a common spice here that adds heat. 
It's hot like doggeron and sour like vinegar. It gives the meat sauce a real nice punch. Cheese turned to powder? <laughs> it happens to me all the time. You can just break it up and eat it. It's unbelievable. Uh, try giving it a good shake. sell these two condiments to the company then. Whoops, I keep forgetting that I'm retired. What happened? You can only go to that restaurant once every seven days. Wait, really? I choose to go once every four times, to make my arrangement with its master, of course. But you could go more? Yes, of course. And you can go every seven days if you like. What? I get to go back to the restaurant? Well, sure. Just look for the door. Thank you so much. I wonder what I should try the next time. Serious? Uh, I'm counting on you. <sighs> right. <laughs> Port. I had a feeling this was the case. It may be a golden opportunity, but how can the child be left here alone while he goes off to battle? <sighs> Grandfather! Do you find it dreary here, my darling Adelheide? Uh, oh no! It's much cooler than the Imperial capital! And everyone I've met has been so nice to me. <sighs> Mommy, I think she must be lonely. There are no other children here, and unfortunately, Her Majesty the Empress wasn't able to come because of her pregnancy. I see. Given the circumstances, I suppose it's to be expected. Oh. Did you know this door is an entrance to a secret chamber? To a secret chamber? It's very special, but no one else can know about it. Wouldn't want to have my privileges taken away. I don't recall much of what it was like inside the secret chamber. Only bits and pieces remain. I do vaguely remember that it had a lot of chairs and tables, and was very bright, and that I somehow ate clouds while I was there too. But the only other soul who knew of the clouds, my grandfather, is gone now. Here you are, Princess Adelheid. Please try not to lose heart. No. <laughs> are you all right, Princess? Oh. I'm fine. It's only because I'm tired from the journey here. Please don't worry about me. Oh, good. That's all it was? I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm sincerely sorry. If you need anything, please call for me at any time. I'll come straight away should you need me. <laughs> oh, what's the matter? I just behaved dreadfully. I realize the pauper killer disease rarely spreads. But I still treated Princess Adelheid like she had the plague instead. That must have been awful. However, I believe it's normal to fear a disease we don't know how to cure yet. No healing magic or medicines will work. True, but... You must try not to look so contrite. Keep in mind, the disease can be overcome with rest and recuperation. We need to stay strong and support the princess until she recovers. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Excuse me, I've brought tea. Were the sweets not to your liking? No, they're fine. I just don't have much of an appetite. Of course not. I'll prepare you something lighter, and hopefully that will be more appetizing. Yes, thank you. Huh? What? There's 
shouldn't be a door right there. I feel as though I've seen it before. Now, where could that possibly lead? It's good to see you, Wilhelm. Uh, are you with him, little lady? <laughs> <laughs> hey, whip up one of those treats. You worked at a cafe when you were in university, right? You know, I'm not terribly good with that sort of thing myself. Hold on, what do you want? I'm going to need a little more information than that. <laughs> yes, I got it. One of those treats. Hello and welcome. Um, excuse me a moment, but can you tell me where I am? This is Nikoya. It's a place to eat. So I'm in a restaurant, hmm? Hmm? Miss, do I know you? Are you Croquette's, I'm sorry, <sighs> Wilhelm's granddaughter? Uh, I am. Are you saying that you knew my grandfather? Yes. How about it? I can make you anything on the house if you want. What do you say? Stay and have a quick bite? A quick bite of what? That's up to you. <sighs> grandfather! What is this? Let's see, it's, um, it's, it's clouds, you know, clouds. Really? <sighs> if it's up to me, then I think, no, I know I'd like to order clouds. Hmm? Clouds, huh? Yes, I gotcha. Give me a minute. I'll have it right out. Thank you for waiting. Here are your clouds, um, well, your chocolate parfait. It looks more like a colorful piece of art than something you can eat. Take your time and enjoy. I suppose I should at least try it. <laughs> this is perfect! Sweet, but not too sugary. This fruit's sweet and sour taste is exquisite, too. Um, the baked confectionery and the fruits. Just how many flavors does it have? It's so cold! Now that one's like a winter cloud with plenty of snow on top. Cold and delicious at the same time, right? You're right! <sighs> Sweet and bitter. Oh, this must be the taste of chocolate. So good. All done? You look like you feel better. is open once every seven days. Come back if you want. We'd love to see you again. Every seven days? All right. Of course. The next time you visit, I will have to charge you. Of course. And I'll certainly come back to visit. Please do. Thank you. Have a nice day. Her grandfather was named Wilhelm? I guess you must have known him then. Well, sort of. I think my granddad told me about him. He built up this puny little empire over 50 years. By the time Wilhelm was done, they were calling it the Grand Empire. He was the great first emperor. Something like that. <laughs> Princess Adelheid! You need your rest! Come with me to your bedchamber! No, it's all right. I actually feel pretty good today. What? You do? Say, do you know the name of this flower? They've been blooming here in this spot for years and years. I don't know. I do like them, though. I agree. It's such a lovely flower. <laughs> Marshlands stretch across the southern part of the eastern continent. Within these marshes live monsters known as the Lizardmen. The Lizardmen have a unique appearance. They look as if they could be half human and half lizard. Since ancient times, the marshes have been their territory.
survive by hunting and feeding off the large lizards, crocodiles, birds, and fish native to the area. Among these marshes, we find a tribe of lizardmen known as the Blue Tail Tribe. Their hero, Gagonko, cleans himself after a recent hunt. His bath is preparation for a special excursion, a trip that is made once every seven days. As the soil washes off, Gagonko's body is exposed. He now searches for any spots he may have missed during his bath. To warm up his body, which was chilled by the water, Gagonpo faces the sun shining bright in the sky and spreads out his large body, basking in the light. This lizard man hero is a head taller than average, and his body bulges with powerful muscles. Standing in the sunshine, he is quite the sight to behold. His hide is covered in hard green scales with a faint blue tint. Although they bear many scars, his scales are still strong enough to repel a blow from the dull iron swords used by the humans. his freshly washed body, anointing it with a cloth woven from vines. After admiring his scales faintly glittering in the sunlight, he moves on to equipping himself. His armor is sturdy, a valuable piece made from the hide of a hydra that he led the tribe in defeating. His weapon? A spear set with a polished black stone. He never fights without it. I am now ready. ago, a door suddenly appeared in this spot, which is now considered an altar. The one who originally decided to leave through this door leading to parts unknown was the hero Garupa, said to be the strongest of the Blue Tails at the time. On the other side of the door is Nikoya of the Other World. Garupa had a miraculous encounter. He returned with the amazing food he found whilst there. Thus began a new tradition. On every seventh day, when the Black Door appears, the tribe's strongest man, their hero as chosen in an annual festival, would venture into Nikoya of the Other World and return with incredible food for the rest of the tribe. He's here! The hero has arrived! Elder, I am ready to go. Mm, it's time. Go, our hero. You got to! We have silver stones, copper stones, and dishes! Good. Good. I will return. of the other world. A large omelet rice for here. Three more omelet rice orders to go. This is the method used by Gagonpo and the other lizard men to exchange silver and copper stones for a revered feast from the other world. Sure. If you'll wait just a minute, please. Here you go. One omelet rice. At long last, Gagonpo beholds his goal, the cuisine of the other world. A magnificent yellow dish striped with vivid red lines. The aroma of cooked egg wafting from this dish called omelet rice elicits a gulp from his throat. 
the Gonpo joyfully picks up the sparkling eating utensil provided. Thank you for this food. He voices the prayer said before meals in the other world, and gently wields his spoon. The egg breaks readily, so soft the spoon sinks into it with almost no force. Inside, it is packed with a red filling. The cooked egg is the first thing he tastes, of course. The Gonpo knows not how this miracle is done. When the tribe tries cooking crocodile eggs from the marshes, they are never this exquisitely fluffy. It tastes of milk and butter, and the saltiness is strong, yet also faintly sweet. Then, enhancing the soft, light flavor of the egg is a sour red substance that has been poured over the top. Uniting the eggs with the sour red substance gives birth to a harmony and a wonderful flavor. The filling inside the omelet is delicious as well. The poultry has been salted nicely, perhaps to preserve it. When the delectable meat is bitten into, the juice released is perfectly seasoned. The other world's thinly sliced mushrooms have just the right amount of rich, savory flavor. Minced and fried, the sweet and mysterious vegetables that have been used provide an unexpected balance to this ethereal dish. The intricately seasoned orange grains delicately bring the entire flavor profile together, absorbing the essence of each individual ingredient and then combining them into one spectacular flavor. <sighs> Please. Yes, of course. Before finishing the first, the Gonpo orders a second serving. For three years after the day he first ate this dish, the Gonpo has been captivated by this taste. When he finishes a second serving, the Gonpo takes a satisfied breath. His stomach full, his expression becomes euphoric and powerful. I am now finished. You're all set. Three large takeout orders of omelet rice. They're ready. This is payment. Much appreciated. Goodbye. I'm looking forward to your next visit. I have returned. And as you can see, I carry the food. are more precious to the lizard men than any other dish. As they look, they audibly swallow their pooling saliva. A simple stir-fry of finely chopped meat and orani trickles out of the omelet on the first plate. The savory, finely chopped meat has been seasoned only with salt, pepper, and faintly sweet orani. The flavors of the egg and the red substance are easily tasted, and each individual ingredient can be enjoyed. A stir-fry of white cheese and smoked meat reveals itself in the omelet on the second plate. Neither the cheese, a human food with unique character, nor the salted smoked meat can be found in the marshes. The sensation of the cheese and the smoked meat, which has a flavor that both raw and roasted meat lack, melts in the mouth and is truly a magnificent experience. Sweet white cream paired with small pink-colored shrimp ooze out of the omelet on the third plate. With its luxurious creaminess and bouncy, perfectly cooked shrimp, this final dish is the sweetest of the three. The smells of the three omelets leave the lizard men in a dilemma. They can each only eat from one of the omelet dishes. Which should they choose? If only they could eat from all three. These thoughts echo in their heads as they wait for the elder's permission. You may eat. With permission given, the lizard men descend upon the omelets with an impassioned fervor. Some devour their share in one gulp, while others relish the experience bit by bit, all the while happily smacking their tails against the ground. It is almost time for the annual festival. I will be the hero again. And then, I will get to eat loads of omelet rice for the next year, too. So, were you able to eat it? Well, 
I guess I'll be going. Are you certain you'll be safe, all on your own? I'll be fine. I'm not a child anymore. Besides, we're missing a few items I need for lunch. You love mushroom salad, don't you, Papa? Of course, but... Yes, I know. The anniversary of your mother's death. <laughs> She's why I go. To make her something grand. I see. Be safe, Vardania. I'll be back soon. Two portions I'd of like another fried shrimp, please. Sorry. Say that again, but not together. <clears throat> Two portions another of fried shrimp. cutlet. Right. Coming right up. Oh, come in. Have a seat anywhere that's empty.
find out. Oh. oh my! I feel like I ate this when I was little, but I can't place it. And this ponzu sauce. I taste the juice of a not too sweet, strongly citric fruit, as well as a salty juice that closely resembles the tofu itself. A scent of the sea I can't quite place straddles both essences, elevating them to a single superior flavor. It's hard to believe a human could have such skill. I may not know exactly what this scent of the sea is, but I can definitely tell how it's working in this unbelievable dish. A long time ago, back in the days when she traveled in the human world, Mama learned a lot about mushrooms that were dried in the sun. I don't know why it works, but for some reason, dried mushrooms improve the flavor of soup significantly more than when you use regular mushrooms. I think this must work the same way. Drying that mysterious ingredient increases its flavor, and simmering it gives the base a savoriness it wouldn't otherwise have. The addition of that special ingredient gives this dish a complete flavor. Moreover, there's the inclusion of these fragrant herbs and the snowy white grated vegetable. Matching these with a sour, salty sauce creates a complex deliciousness that combines multiple flavors and scents. I can only describe this sauce as sophisticated, and matching it with tofu, which has a simple and somewhat bland flavor. Why it gives the dish a light and yet satisfying feeling. I'm growing full without eating to excess. Surprisingly, this cuisine is far superior to anything we elves can create. So, were you able to eat it? For a human to be able to make this delicious meal. I refuse to allow us to lose to them. Are you really going, Fardania? Of course I am. I'll be fine, Papa. How many times have I told you I'm a grown woman now? I know you believe that, but you are still very young. Really, I'm fine, Papa. Don't worry about me. Besides, when I get back, I'll feed you something delicious, too. Wait! At least take this letter! from my granddad, so I'm not sure how much of it is true, but... contract with my employer. My share is your belongings and a full 30% of the profits made from selling you. Feel free to gloat about it as much as you want. After all, you went up against one of the four heroes, the half-elf Alexander, and you survived to tell the tale. <laughs> Ew, you're a monster! Oh, you think I'm a monster? <laughs> Never imagined a monster would be calling me a monster. <laughs> Hey, listen up. You have been granted special permission. A rare occurrence indeed. They're letting you use the weapon you used before. And another thing, 
We paid 10,000 gold coins for you. The Demon Lord says if you repay it, you can buy back your freedom. Is he not gracious? If you manage to best your opponent in battle, 100 gold! Win 100 times and you'll be a free man! Oh, how I envy you! Do not mock me. Or do you actually believe I stand a chance? Just put on a good show. Prepare yourself for your matches at noon. The Demon Lord family that controlled the Demon's capital had purchased Lionel. Under the Empire, the Demons ruled through law and intelligence. Lionel had committed many heinous acts in their domain, so they decided to make an example of him by throwing him into the arena as a gladiator slave. I'm facing a manticore. I don't think I can beat it. I lost to that spindly little half-elf after all. Who's there? What is that? Why would a door appear here out of nowhere? Might as well go through it. Almost out of time, anyway. Hello, and welcome. Oh, a new customer. Well, aren't you a rare sight to behold? Tell me, human. What sort of place am I in? An eatery. It's called Western Restaurant Nakoya. An eatery? Why is there such a place in the arena? All right, then. Do you think you'll stay and have a bite? If you don't have any money, I can just put it on your tab. Really? I would like to eat something, although I cannot pay you now. So, is the food you serve here considered good? Of course. Everything we serve is delicious. If you've got a particular craving, just say the word. I could use some meat at the moment, and I... Well... Something to bring me victory. No, forget I said that. Right, coming right up. Could he really? All right, this should do the trick. What is it? A katsudon. Katsudon. That's the one. In the language of my country, katsu is a verb that can mean to win, and it's not just tasty. The dish is made with meat, eggs, and rice, so it's packed full of healthy nutrients. What you're about to eat is a meal that is made for a real warrior. Oh. Take your time and enjoy. Oh. All right. Might as well try it. Watching you wolf that down made me realize one little bowl couldn't be enough for a big guy like you. But hey, if you don't want it, I can have it for lunch. Do you want it? Yes, yes, of course I want it! Wow, how about another bowl? I won't hassle you for the money either. You can just pay me when you have it. Yes, thank you. Much appreciated. 
I am indebted to you, sir. Nah, I'm happy that you enjoyed yourself. I did, and I shall return. See you then. Five bowls on your tab, so pay me as soon as you can. What is this? Didn't you say you wouldn't hassle me for the money? Oh, that sounds like something I'd say. Uh. <laughs> All right, it's time to fight. I have to earn enough money to pay for those pork cutlet rice bowls. He went on to win 10,000 gold coins in only one year. For more than 20 years after that, he dominated the arena as its top gladiator. I hear they even started calling him the Lion King. Wow, that's incredible. I wonder, do you think he could beat that half-elf if they fought again now? Huh, good question. Another pork cutlet rice bowl! <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think so. <laughs> Me too. I mean, look at how many winning bowls he eats. <laughs> Master, about our menus. Were the regular menu and the dessert menu written by different people? <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised you noticed. Maybe I was wrong, but I thought you couldn't read Eastern Continent script. No, I can't, but I can see what the shapes are, and they look a little different. On top of that, I've, um, memorized the menu. So, um, so pretty, please don't fire me. Fried shrimp. <laughs> shrimp caught in the southern sea, lightly coated in breadcrumbs, and then fried in oil. What do you call stewed cow's meat? Beef stew! <laughs> 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 uh, hello and welcome! of the eastern continent boasting great power is a duchy that stretches back to the ancient times. A lovely princess calls this territory home. Her name is Victoria. She is the elder sister of the current duke and will turn 36 this year. Victoria is currently unmarried and rumor has it she is almost certain to remain so for the rest of her life. The reason for this is due to an unusual trait with which she was born. You see, Victoria is a half-elf. Is something wrong? Uh, you're not feeling unwell, are you? No, I'm perfectly fine. Oh? We fear being cooked up in your chambers must depress you. No, I'm all right. I just... <sighs> you were just thinking again, weren't you? Your devotion to your research is impressive, sister. <laughs> Care for more? Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> Is that storage box you've mentioned to us before in your mind this evening? Yes, with a bit more time, I should be able to make a larger version. That's great. Well, then, if you'll excuse me. Yes, of course. Try not to push yourself too hard, though. We worry about you. Thank you, but I'm fine. Really, I'll see you soon. Now, both of Victoria's parents were human, and yet... When Victoria came into this world, she was only half-human. Interestingly, even a child of two humans will sometimes exhibit traits of elves and half-elves who have previously mixed into their bloodlines. 
over however many thousands of years. Those born under these circumstances cannot hope for the happiness of an ordinary life. Half-elves inherit the magical prowess of elves while also receiving the spirit of humans. With lifespans that can reach well into the hundreds, half-elves usually appear to be as young as teenagers until they reach approximately a full century of age. They are quite simply beings that defy most human knowledge and expectation. In the human world, half-elves are at best alien. Of course, this is nothing in comparison to the elves' world. Regardless of their origins, they are forced out of ordinary society. Having few choices, they either reject the secular world and serve the gods by taking advantage of their long lifespan, as well as their superhuman magical abilities to become sorcerers, or they can become mercenaries or adventurers where ability is everything. Another option available is to migrate to one of the small handful of half-elf villages across the land. Victoria decided her best choice was to live the life of a sorcerer. She appealed to her father, the previous duke, telling him she wanted to make the most out of her powerful magic, and, with his blessing, she walked along the path of sorcery. It was then Victoria learned she was a genius. After a mere three months, she had already managed to surpass the skills of her magic tutor. It took only one short year for her to master magic beyond the best sorcerer in the duchy, the court's head sorcerer. At this point, her talents started to become recognized, and so, ten years ago, Victoria became the pupil of the greatest sorcerer in the kingdom, one of the heroes who killed the malevolent god, the sage Artorius, otherwise known as me. Amazingly, after eight long years of complete devotion to her studies, Victoria attained the greatest secrets of magic. After this impressive achievement, on my advice, she returned to the duchy to walk her own path. She was granted generous research funds on the one condition that she would remain out of the public eye. Now, Victoria continues to usher her magic research forward in her personal laboratory under the nickname The Witch Princess of the Duchy. However, there are times when even Victoria puts her research aside, to be precise, once every seven days. I suppose I could have something light. again. Hello and welcome. Welcome. Hmm. Hello. Here's some water and a menu. Take your time looking. Thanks. Oh, she looks like she's an elf. I wonder if she'll order the tofu steak too. the mode, please. Uh, huh? Yes, of course. I'll be back in a minute. Hmm. It really is my writing. My master's writing as well. But how? We only gave him one. Yes, welcome. Do you think you could write a menu for me, miss? I've added some desserts to what we offer, but I don't know the Eastern Continent's language. I'll leave it to you, dear. I'm not so fond of sweets myself, so I doubt I can do it justice. Here, pen and paper. This is the first dish. I've been told that you have a great fondness for sweets that are egg-based. Here you are, one pudding a la mode.
And here I go. about being half-elf. It's what enabled her to encounter pudding a la mode in the restaurant to another world, as well as to immerse herself in researching how to properly store it. To the witch princess of the duchy, living in the shadows was no hardship. In fact, she rather enjoyed it. job on the other side? No. Well, at least not yet. The most I've found so far are odd jobs that last a day. That's rough. It can't be too bad for you, though. I see you hard at work here every day of Satter, so you must be managing to get by. I am. Plus, I love it here. Uh, hello and welcome! I'll have the usual. <sighs> right, the usual. That's a pork lane cutlet and a draft beer. It'll be out shortly. Hey, don't forget about me. Make sure you put my order in first, okay? He'll be first, don't worry. <laughs> Minced meat cutlet, you realize that shouting won't make your food come any faster? Yes, I'm aware, thank you, pork loin cutlet. I was only reminding her because deep frying takes Each of the while. regulars who come in almost every day of Satter has a preferred dish they like to order. In fact, they order their favorite dish so often that it winds up becoming their nickname. And, of course, they're all thoroughly convinced that their favorite thing to eat is most definitely the best meal the restaurant has to offer. Unfortunately, if the topic of which menu item tastes better happens to come up, it usually turns into a huge argument. A master warned me that some days it can get really intense. Today happened to be one of those days. <laughs> Why keep trying to convince me? Clearly the shrimp cutlet sandwiches are the best. Uh... Are you insane? What's clear is that you've never experienced the taste of bread and minced meat cutlets that have been soaked in sauce overnight. An interesting theory, for sure. Sadly, it's all wrong and ill-informed. I weep for you in your ignorant stance on shrimp and tartar sauce, for it is the perfect combination of flavors, even cold, this dish is divine. Lovely story. But here's your bread! The tastiest sandwich here. Madness! Huh? What could those two be fighting so incredibly loudly about? Well, from what I gather, food. They're arguing over which of the dishes makes a better sandwich. Good grief. Is that even a topic worth having an argument about? Indeed not. It is nonsense. How am I supposed to eat in such an environment? It's transcendent! <laughs> Hyperbole is the problem with you kingdom girls. This is what makes the best sandwich. Vegetable, fruity, and red. Vegetable, leafy, and green. When you look into the sandwich after you take a bite, you witness the colorful vegetables contrasting with the white meat of the shrike. Even its appearance is a thing of beauty. Minced meat cutlets are boring. They're boring brown on the inside and outside. A boring meal for a boring girl, huh? Excuse me? Oh, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but could you please keep it down? Shut, Shut up! <clears throat> <clears throat> Come try not to be upset with each other. There's no need for a quarrel here. We all just want to enjoy our food, right? Yes, it's commonly accepted that conversation can spice up a meal. Taken too far, it can spoil the taste. You're right. I apologize I went too far. 
I actually think shrimp cutlet sandwiches are pretty good. Pretty good, huh? Right, sorry, I was in the wrong as well. Won't happen again. You know what they say, to each their own and all that. This takes me back. We used to passionately argue over which dish was better too. But we were even louder. Minced meat cutlet, the first would say. Minced meat cutlet is the tastiest cutlet. He and Croquette always found themselves in the worst squabbles over it. <sighs> yes, tastes are varied. True enough. Minced meat cutlet and the fried shrimp are both very good dishes. But I must say that pork loin cutlet sandwich? Why, it is surely the best thing between two slices of bread. <laughs> He says that, but cutlets are best eaten while still hot. Teriyaki chicken makes the tastiest sandwich. It maintains a savory profile even when it's cold. Huh? Uh, hmm? I believed you were a rice man. Now this? Can you even put that teriyaki chicken between slices of bread? I doubt it. As if you're a sandwich man. You order nothing but beer and pork loin cutlets, and then more beer and more pork loin cutlets. Why are you bringing your pork loin cutlets to an argument about sandwiches anyway? I shall tell you why. It's because I take home a pork loin cutlet sandwich at least once a month. No vegetables, only the cutlets, some mustard, and the sauce. Those three ingredients together between two slices of buttered bread are nothing less than delectable. And cold, well, that's an experience every person should have at least once in their life. The savoriness of the oil is real art. Meanwhile, the fine juices combine exquisitely with the sauce, all of which have been wrapped up in a bread that's as soft as an angel's bosom. The tang of the bit of mustard included gives it a nice kick, too. That is the very definition of a divine meal. My turn. I only learned this recently, but teriyaki is great with bread. Thin slices of teriyaki chicken and fresh cucumber slathered in that sweet sauce take flavor to a brand new level. And adding uncooked arani along with a hint of mustard when you sandwich it between the bread is like a dream. Originality always wins. Interestingly enough, I hear that teriyaki sandwiches are extremely popular in this world. My vote goes to pork cutlet sandwiches. <laughs> That said, my pork cutlet rice bowls would be the best takeout if they were offered. Another bowl! Oh, yes, of course. It'll be out soon. Master, we have an order for one pork cutlet rice bowl, please. You got it. A large omelet rice for you. Three more omelet rice orders to go. Uh, hello there. Please just have a seat wherever, all right? If we're talking sandwiches, I want to try spaghetti with meat sauce, but in a bun, please. Agreed. I bet this restaurant's spaghetti with meat sauce would be delicious in one of those hot dog buns. After all, the tangy tomato and spaghetti with meat sauce can certainly hold its own against the taste of a good bread. It has a flavor like nothing else and would make a hearty filling. Hear, hear. I, um, well, if I may intrude, I'd like to say something. The best sandwich here would be a fruit sandwich with cream. It's delicious and it's just incomparable. The sweetness of soft cream and that of ripe fruit is so... Well, it's different from any of the other things you've described so far. And when you combine them, it's enchanting. Maybe we could all calm down, please? I'm not sure where you get your information, but custard would have a better flavor. It would add a needed richness as well as intensify the sweetness. Custard also blends better with the taste of fruit and bread. On top of that, it won't cause the bread to get soggy. Oh, you truly think so? I eat mine as soon as I get home, so sogginess isn't really a concern for me. Maybe you'd eat yours faster if it was better? Ridiculous. And here we go again. Thank you, it was delicious as usual. Not a problem. Thank you for coming. Oh, by the way, I was curious if you offered any rice for takeout by chance. Come on. Yes, I actually do have something. Really? You do? How about grilled rice balls? I think I can offer you those as a takeaway option. Grilled rice balls, huh? Perfect, I'll take that. None of the food in the town where I'm staying comes even close to satisfying me. Yes, I understand. If you'll give me a few minutes, please. <sighs> How should I season them? I'll start off with my usual combination of seaweed, soy sauce, mirin, and sesame seed sprinkle on top. One can be onion and miso. Then maybe I'll toss in some seaweed strips cooked in soy sauce. Oh, enough! Try it and you'll understand. Hey! Yes, miss? A minced meat cutlet sandwich for the stubborn fool over there. Then I would like to order a shrimp cutlet sandwich, but deliver it to that silly girl. 
Yes, of course. A minced meat cutlet sandwich and a shrimp cutlet sandwich. Excuse me, I'd like to try that teriyaki chicken sandwich nonsense. Yes, sir. I'll have the pork loin cutlet sandwich. Um, yes, sir. Although I'm still positive teriyaki sandwiches are better. Uh, a spaghetti with meat sauce dog to go. I'll have the same thing, please. Minced meat cutlet, shrimp cutlet, teriyaki chicken, and pork loin sandwiches. Plus two spaghetti with meat sauce dogs. A large omelet rice for you. Three more omelet rice orders to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Excuse me, Master? A large omelet rice for here and three more omelet rice orders to go. A rush on that would be great if you can. Sure thing. Since you're so insistent, why don't we compare both dishes as well? That should clear things up nicely, right? Agreed. Yeah, let's do it. Excuse me, miss? We have an order, too. We'll take one fruit sandwich with cream and another fruit sandwich with custard. Pork cutlet rice ball! A large omelet rice. Three more omelet rice orders to go. Can I get another beer, too, please? And two more cups of seishu. So that's minced meat cutlet, shrimp cutlet, teriyaki chicken, and pork loin sandwiches, plus two spaghetti with meat sauce dogs to go, one plate each of fruit sandwiches with cream and with custard, a pork cutlet rice bowl, a beer, and two cups of seishu. Now, I put in a large omelet rice order and the three to go, so... Coming right up, everyone! Sorry that it was a little later than usual today. It's no matter. Farewell. Till next time. Thank you. Have a great evening. <sighs> then, after I watched the final diner walk away, carrying her huge pot of beef stew as if it weighed practically nothing. Hey, Aletta. You hungry? <sighs> yes. Master? Oh, what's that? This is called a steamer basket. It's a tool I use for making steamed dishes. A strainer or a basket would work just as well, though. specialized in steamed dishes, dim sum in particular. I had to practice this technique as much as I practiced making fried rice. It does take a lot of skill to make perfect dumplings or steamed buns, but steaming potatoes is not at all difficult. I think anyone could learn to do it fairly quickly. <sighs> all right, that should do it. I'm 
place of words, my breath spills out in quick puffs. The freshly steamed cobbler's tuber is surprisingly hot. While the steam tries to escape, the vegetable crumbles apart in my mouth without me even having to chew it. At the same time, the butter on the top melts like the most delicious lava ever. It enhances the cobbler's tuber while helping it slide down my throat with ease. I don't know if it's because this cobbler's tuber was cooked with that strange steaming method, but the flavor is much stronger and better than an ordinary one, so much so that even I find it delicious. This is the first time I've had a cobbler's tuber that tasted so good. I've never really liked them before now. I can't stop, and before too long, the cobbler's tuber is gone. Steamed potatoes are great on their own, and almost all seasonings work with them. That's probably the reason potatoes are so popular. Want another one? Would I? Oh yes, please! The cobbler's tubers I ate just to survive were awful. I never would have thought, not in a million years, that they could turn into such a delicious dish. Needless to say, after that night, my favorite food wound up being cobbler's tubers, otherwise known as potatoes. Admiral Flugel, I trust everything is to your liking. There's a difference between waiting 7,000 days and waiting 7 days 1,000 times. You ever really considered that before? I hadn't until recently, and now it consumes me. Sorry, I'm not sure what you mean. Nothing. Don't mind me. Just thinking aloud. Twenty years ago, Admiral Alphonse Flugel widely accepted as the strongest Navy Admiral in the Duchy, provided escort to a fleet of merchant vessels heading for the Western Continent. After a sudden attack by Kraken, the Master of the Seas, the Admiral secured the escape of every merchant vessel in the fleet. Tragically, their escape came at the cost of his own ship, which disappeared along with the Admiral. It was assumed he'd been lost. However, he washed ashore on a remote island in the far seas. In accordance with natural selection, he survived by killing and feeding off the beasts he found there. The Admiral spent 20 long years alone on that island, isolated from the rest of humanity. Three days ago, after sailing through a violent storm, we saw the island and made our way towards it in order to repair the damages our ship sustained. We met the Admiral and took him into our care. Yet, it seemed now that rescue had finally come. The Admiral was reluctant to leave the island. All right, that should look better. I'll go. Once more, it's been seven days. It took three days, but we managed to repair all the damage to the ship. Afterwards, we brought the Admiral aboard with us and departed the island. I wonder if there'll be a door somewhere in the duchy, too. I do remember a duchy knight being amongst the diners. Perhaps I'll search after we return. There truly was a door here. And closer than I expected it to be. Is that really you? Huh? 
It's been quite a while. Indeed, good to see you. What I'm here for is curry. Curry rice, immediately, I need it. Sure thing, just a minute, please. Your ice water and a wet towel. <sighs> Not yet? How long must I wait? Tell me! Uh, just a moment, I think. Thank you for your patience. Here's your curry rice.
Enemies are meant to be fought and killed. However, I did not wish for innocent beings to die. Not merely because I was present. Not because of me. I felt allowing that to occur would make me the same as the thing I hated most. That is why, shortly after the fight, when we divided the world into our individual territories, I decided to take the end of the sky. While it is brimming with magic, it contains no living things. Without living things, there will be no innocent deaths. And so again today, I remember alone. Unchanging. Eternal. my opinion. That's right, kind of a taste test. I've been asked about this for a long time now. Hmm. You have? People want a curry dish made with something other than pork. <laughs> Took a while, but I managed to finish a dish I'm satisfied with. Right. And so you've come to me. I have. Would you like to try it for me? There's no charge, of course. Yes, yes, I'll eat it. Prepare your dish. Much appreciated. Interesting. I wonder how this new curry of his is gonna taste. Thank you for your patience. Here's your chicken curry. By the way, it's spicier than normal, so just be aware of that. Mm. Duly noted. Thank you. You're welcome. Take your time and enjoy. This dish is indeed quite different from my usual. Here's a deep receptacle filled with a curry-colored soup. I can see a good portion of skinless fowl meat floating in the soup, but that's about it. Wait. I see no other ingredients. How can this be? Alongside the receptacle, I've been served a plate of the white rice that puts the rice in curry rice. This looks completely different from rice that's been covered in my usual curry. Uh, certainly has a strong aroma, doesn't it? Let me just start with the soup for now. Instead, curry should be eaten with rice after all. Not only does eating it with rice mellow the spiciness that assailed me a moment ago, but I can also detect a savoriness that was absent while eating the soup alone. It isn't that the curry doesn't have vegetables. The vegetables are completely dissolved into it. Oh, amazing! The meat is so tender that it crumbles apart the moment I put it in my mouth. The flavor of the curry intensifies the fowl while also creating a richer soup. I say, this fowl meat is truly worthy of being the dish's namesake. All right, what's the verdict, Alphonse? Is extra spicy good? I kicked it up a bit to make sure it's palatable to the people on your side. Well... This is far spicier than my usual. It's an entirely different dish, though. I must say, I find it... Let's see. I find it delicious. Thank you, Alphonse. I'll have what he's having. Huh? <laughs> ah! Oh, my devil! What are you thinking? You're gonna have to cover up something! What is wrong? Um, miss, if you could... Some clothes would be nice. Some clothes? Oh. I see. Is this all right? Uh, yeah, that works. Watching them use magic is incredible. <sighs> That's an L for you. I didn't realize they use that kind of magic, though. Master, you heard the girl. Chicken curry. I'll even insist that you put it on my bill. Oh, really? Well, then, give me a minute, please. No, don't tell me. Could it be another of her kind? If so, I can 
do nothing but watch. Thank you for waiting. Here's your chicken curry. Good. Go on and dig in. Another chicken curry, but um. Don't worry about the bill. I'll pay for the girl. Let her eat as much as she asks of you. We can do that. I've still got the bag of gold coins you first gave us. I'm sure you know it'll be a while before that runs out. I do. So have at it. Yes, sir. Give me just a minute. <laughs> Thank you for waiting. Here's your chicken curry. <sighs> Another. Thanks for waiting. Here's your chicken curry. I believe that'll be enough for me. Another. Thanks for waiting. Here's your chicken curry. I'll be having the beef stew. Yes, of course. Coming right up. So a door appeared in your territory as well? Yes. I have another question for you then. What is it? In your estimation, what dish in this restaurant is the most delicious? Chicken curry. Really interesting. Huh? Let me share with you some important information. In this restaurant, you need to have something called money if you wish to eat anything, including chicken curry, or whatever that is. Uh, money? I doubt you will disgrace yourself, but just to be clear, this is part of my territory. I won't allow any disrespectful behavior here. If you threaten this place, you will pay with your life. I don't have any of this money. What should I do? It is rather simple. You need only work. Humans acquire money by finding employment and working for it. Work for it? Excuse me, Master. Yes, Miss? This one is named Kuro. She is a very old friend of mine. Sadly, she lives in the middle of nowhere, so she has never seen money. But apparently, she has taken quite a shine to your cooking. If it is not too much trouble, do you think you could take her on as an employee? I can personally vouch for her reliability. As far as her wages are concerned, I'm certain any leftover chicken curry will do. Will it? And you, miss? Does that sound all right to you? Yes. Okay, then. We can try it out. Next time you see the door, just come back through. I will. You'll love it, and thank you. Uh, I 
met Arte three days ago. That day was like any other day. I was out fishing on the boat my father had given me. The only exception was the weather. A storm appeared out of nowhere, and I was swept overboard. When I was moments away from drowning, Arte appeared and rescued me. Undaunted by the storm, the mermaid saved me and returned me to my boat. She then prayed to the water god, who soon quieted the waves. After the storm was over, Arte directed my ship to a nearby populated island. Thank you so much. Can I ask your name? Arte. Arte? <laughs> my name's Roke. Thank you again, truly. I would have died if not for you. I'd like to repay you. What can I do, though? Do you need anything? Ten silver <gasps> coins. Sure. Uh, what are they for? They're for me to use. But for what? Come with me and see. Meet me here on the day of Satter in three days. Satter? <laughs> sure, I'll see you then. I'm not the kind of person who'd profess to know everything in the world, but I'd never in my life heard of mermaids buying things the way humans do. It's not exclusive to mermaids either. Even monster races that appear as if they're human usually don't think of gold or silver coins as having some intrinsic value. You can't eat coins, and they can't be used as weapons. Rocks, flowers, scales, and fangs are more impressive, so they make much better ornaments. Because of this, they have a difficult time understanding why humans, elves, and dwarves all seem to want money with such an intense fervor. But Arte was different. She had come from the Mer people who live in the South Sea. They're known to worship the Blue God. These Mer people socialized at times with humans who also worship the Blue God, so they understood our value of money. However, Arte is currently undergoing training to become a priestess with the Mer people of the North Sea. They do not worship the Blue God and have no interaction with humans whatsoever. So even if they did have money, they'd have no real use for it. I thought. All right, where are we supposed to go now? We need to go into that forest over there. Forest, huh? But how... Just a moment. <sighs> I can pray to the blue god for the legs of a dragon. I can't get wings. Well, at least not yet. Whoa, that's amazing. Let's go. It'll be crowded if we head in later than this. Here it is. Why is a door in the middle of an island? You ready? <laughs> Come on in. Hello, Arte. It's been a while. Indeed it has. May I order? Of course. Whatever you'd like. I assume your companion will be dining as well? Uh, yes, demi-glaze hamburg steak. Two orders with rice, please. You got it. Give me just a minute. Well, shall we sit? Uh, Wherever you'd like to sit is fine. Thanks. Um, where are we? This is the restaurant to another world. You can only come once every seven days. Only once every seven days? Mm. Also, this is where they serve Hamburg steak. <sighs> Thank you for your patience. Here are your demi-glazed Hamburg steaks with rice. <sighs> Take your time and enjoy. <sighs> it's the meat of some beast. This is, um... Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good. 
Just shoot it and you'll see. Okay, sure thing. Here goes. Wow, the meat is pretty tender, huh? Uh, how... What? What's happening? It makes me want rice. Yeah, it is. You know, I actually think it tastes even better with the egg. <laughs> I'd sure like to have some more. Excuse me. Yes? <gasps> How may I be of assistance? Could we get another order? We had two hamburg steaks with rice. Understood. One moment, please. Here, let me clear those plates away for you. Oh, thank you, miss. <clears throat> Something wrong? Um, yes. I only brought one silver coin with me. Yeah, that might be problematic. <clears throat> it's okay. Uh, I'll pay today. You sure? Obviously. I owe you again for taking me to this great place. <laughs> I'm guessing you wanted those silver coins, so you could have money to go to that restaurant. So, listen. Would it be okay if I maybe went there with you again sometime? <laughs> That's great! Then how does the next day of Saturn sound to you? The next day of Saturn? Sounds perfect. All right, this looks like the place. Okay. Excuse me. I was sent here from the employment agency for an interview. If they turn me down, I'll be fine. I have some leeway from working at the restaurant. Huh? Uh huh? Break time. Take 30 minutes. Thank you. <sighs> so good. It's nice to feel happy again. I was hoping it would be you. This is wonderful. The job is yours if you want it. It's cleaning, laundry, and other basic housekeeping stuff. Does that sound doable? Yes! There's more. I go away a lot, so I'll be counting on you to hold down the fort while I'm gone, too. All right. The pay is eight copper coins per day. Oh, and I have an extra room you can stay in, but it's kind of small. What? I can stay here? You can. <sighs> I wonder if I'd be allowed to use your kitchen. That way I could try making steamed potatoes with butter like Master taught me! Hmm. These are probably those cookies, and I'm a little hungry, so... Oh, you're welcome to eat the cookies in the break room if you want any. Uh-huh. There's a bakery above us called the Flying Puffy. They were nice enough to let us try some out. Something's above us? Yeah, you should give them a taste. Well, Master said I could. Which ones do I want? Um, so this one, and this, this one, and these two. <laughs> Sweets always taste so much more delicious than fruits to me. Hmm. Mm, I ate them way too fast. 
there are still so many left. There's plenty for me to have more. No, I should only have five of these at once. <sighs> Back to work. Thank you for coming. Time to eat. Whoa. Sure, have at it. I may never get used to that. Yeah. Also, sometimes when she takes a customer's order, I have no way of knowing if it's already been done. Understood. Uh I'll transmit anything about orders or business to both of you. Thanks, that would be a big help. Sure. <laughs> oh, Aletta, I almost forgot. Uh Your pay for today. Uh, right, thank you so much. That's not all. A congratulatory gift. What? Um, and what's a congratulatory gift exactly? A gift to congratulate you. It's for what you said this morning, you know, how you found a steady job? Yes, I did, but I still don't get it. Oh, I see. On this side, we like to give gifts when something good happens to people we know or care about. What? People really do that here? Thanks, that's so nice of you. Huh? Cookies? You look like you were holding back in the break room earlier today. Am I wrong? I thought you enjoyed the cookies. Oh, yes, I liked them. I thought they were wonderful, but they looked like they were probably expensive. Well, yeah, I guess they are pricey. They are gift boxes, after all. But I get to buy them at a business discount. And they're for me? Like I really get to have all of them? Yes, they're yours. I told you it's a congratulatory gift. I bought them for you. I can't thank you enough for these. I'll treasure them forever, or no, I'm gonna eat them. Good plan. I doubt you want to treasure them too much, though. Once you open that box, they'll only last about a half a month at most. Also, watch out for the silica gel at the bottom. Silica gel? The small clear pellets that are not edible, so don't eat those. <gasps> okay, I won't do that. finally arrived at Miss Sarah's house. Great, thank you. I'll be going in then. You can come and pick me up in a little while. Yes, mistress. Enjoy your visit. Oh, Sarah. My sister. I hope everything is going well. Coming! Sarah? Uh, oh, no. I'm terribly sorry, miss. Unfortunately, Miss Sarah's not home at the moment. And who are you? I'm, um, you're Miss Shia, right? <sighs> guess that's a yes. It's very nice to meet you. I'm here because Miss Sarah hired me to be your housekeeper. Oh, and my name's Aletta. A pleasure. Would you mind letting me wait for my sister inside? Yes, of course. Please come in. Just a moment. I'll be right back with some tea. Sarah, why in the world did you go and hire a demon girl? According to Mr. Shia, her older sister by five years, Miss Sarah, is afflicted with William's curse, which has been passed down in the Gold family for generations. William's curse, otherwise known as the feverish adoration of adventure. Every generation, a number of Gold family members are possessed by this troublesome and dangerous fever. They abandon their place in the family business, a large trading company, and choose to become a treasure hunter or adventurer instead. Ultimately and tragically, they are almost certain to lose their lives to this curse. Mistress Shia takes William's curse rather personally. Being close to her sister, she fears the eventual loss the fever is destined to bring and hopes for a miraculous cure. Miss Sarah travels quite a bit, so whenever she's back at her home in the capital, Mistress Shia makes an effort to visit her house to check on her health and safety, making the most of the time they have together. Here you are, Miss Shia. Oh my, are these baked goods by chance? Yes, they're a special type of baked good. They're called cookies and they're really yummy. Oh, and the tea I made is hack tea. Thank you, how very kind. I'll serve myself. I can't say I dislike the bitter, refreshing taste itself, but without something sweet. If these are baked goods, shouldn't they be sweet? They all look lovely and completely different, and they're exquisitely made.
hot. I wonder how they taste. This quality is outstanding. Are they all equally good? Has this truly been baked? The color appears awfully light, and the dark brown part confuses me. Oh my goodness! The outside is crunchy, while the inside is sweet and still moist. It balances incredibly well. What a delicious and wonderfully unique treat! things or where did Sarah buy them if they're hers well I uh there must be a reason you can't say let me ask a different question then huh so is there a way you can get more of these again I think so yeah I can probably manage that although from what I understand they're pretty expensive expensive huh they come in a fancy metal container about this size but there are quite a few cookies included in the box Show me this container. Yes, miss. I'll be right back. Of course. This looks like it's an expensive purchase. The few cookies I served you were the very last ones I had left in there, so I don't have any more to Fine. offer. Uh huh? Can you buy me another one like this? Just whenever you next get a chance is all right. Wait, you're giving me a gold coin? You're right, I am. It's also my pocket money for a whole month, so don't lose it. I doubt cookies would cost an entire gold coin, though. My best estimation would put one of these containers at between 40 or 50 silver coins per box. So then, I'll give you this much just in case. Uh... I'll let you bring back the change to me later. And don't worry, I'll make sure it's worth your while. <laughs> Are we agreed? <laughs> now I'm counting on you, Aletta. Oh, right! Shia, when did you get here? Uh... Mind telling me why you're gripping my housekeeper's hands so desperately? Time to ask the inevitable. What's that? Why in God's name are we climbing this damn mountain? We're heading to eat. Oh, did I not make that clear to you? We're climbing this mountain to eat. Oh, and the spirits and the fish served in this restaurant are pure quality. <clears throat> are you daft? You got us headed in the wrong direction, you dobber. Go on, why trace through the damn mountains to eat fish of all things? <clears throat> Mankey bastard! We're traipsing this way because the restaurant's this way. Calm down, we're nearly there. She's lost it. Restaurant in the middle of the mountains could never serve fish worth a damn. Here we are. Huh? Kill him? You're pushing the limits of my kind nature. The only thing I see at the moment is a rickety old shack. I built that shack, thank you. Sorry if it offends your tender sensibilities. This has gone on far enough. You know I consider you a friend, but the rage is really starting to get to me. No! Yeah. Hold on, what's the second door to in there? How many times do I have to tell you? Through there's a restaurant that serves good alcohol and fish. The restaurant to another world. Hello and welcome. Uh, it's a witch! <laughs> no, put it back. <clears throat> Everyone else looks calm, yeah? They do. Is the master in the kitchen by chance? Yes. Please take a seat wherever you like. I'll bring you menus in a moment. No need. I already know what I'll be ordering. What's in the fried seafood that you're serving up today? Cod, squid rings, and scallops. Good, good. I'll take two of those then. One for me and one for my friend here, please. Oh, and add a couple of mugs of beer and a bottle of your finest whiskey with two glasses of ice. And that should do it for now. I'll put in your order straight away. Make it a rush, will you? We're near dead from climbing a mountain to get here. Understood. It's nice to finally take a breather. Oh, by the by, kill him. That beer and whiskey stuff I heard you ordering, are they the tasty spirits you were speaking of earlier? They are. And these spirits are really so good that you, the best brewer among us tourists, would praise them? I would, yeah. They've got alcohol here I've never even seen before. That's so? That's so. And each of them are so good, they'll knock your boots off. What? This is true? It's true, my friend. Well, now, I'm quite looking forward to this. As am I. Two fried seafood platters, two 
box of beer and a bottle of our finest whiskey along with two glasses of ice. Thanks. All right then, I can go start pouring the beer, Master. Yeah, sounds good. Fill beer mugs in three stages with a seven to three ratio of beer to foam. Make sense? It's important for the flavor. Understood. Thank you for your patience. Here are your beers, gentlemen. Wonderful, thank you. We've been ready. Oh, I've never been served ale from another world before. Now, doesn't that look as lovely as can be? The remainder of your order will be out momentarily. Until then, I hope you enjoy your beers. Are you ready? Of course I am. <laughs> I gotta give it to you. This beer stuff you ordered is right tasty. I know. I can never seem to get enough of it. I like that it's nice and cold. Well, every time I have it, I can't help but think that we should be drinking our beer this way. I think we should have another kill, don't you? That goes without saying. Hey, Les! We'd like to get two more mugs of this beer just as quick as you can manage it. Make them big, all right? Oh, well, would you rather have the large mugs instead of those? Anything will do as long as it's big. Sure thing, sir. Coming right up. Hmm. You know, now that I'm getting a good look at them, I can tell these glass mugs are mighty nice. The glass really lets you have a lovely look at the color of the beer. I like it. Perhaps I should try making one of these myself. But you specialize in elaborate pieces. I think you'd be bored by something so simple. You're wrong. The beer itself is all the decoration I would need. Plus, adding to the design would detract from it. Oh, I had a feeling you'd say something like that. Making an item this transparent and in such a uniform shape, why, it takes more than just time and effort. It requires quite a lot of skill and talent. Of course, and as one of the top classmiths, you'd know. Mm. Thank you for waiting. I've got your two large draft beers. No, oh, no, I am so sorry. There's no matter. Whoa, I didn't expect it to be this big. The rest of your order will be right out. Your meal is served. <gasps> Fried seafood. So, this is the tasty seafood you've been talking about, isn't it now? Aye. Right. Looks good, sure enough, but being from a restaurant in the mountains, I don't trust it. Eat before you judge. The leaf-shaped one is fish. Then there's mollusk and some other sea creature called squid. Don't know what it is, though. You don't? Well, if you say so, I'll try it. What? I've never tasted fish like this! Different from the salty fish we normally come down, isn't it now? Indeed, it's very tasty. Don't you so? Yum! Um, um, this isn't gonna work at all. Another beer, please! Drink that too! All right, coming right up! Amazing! I'll never eat enough of this! Wow, incredible crunch, and every bite oozes with loads and loads of flavor! Another round. Ah, it's just heavenly. Another beer! Understood. Last up is you, you mysterious scallop nonsense. Whoa! This is tasty too! Oh, the scallop is much more tender than that squid, although it has a unique crunch too. The savory taste, dare I call it the taste of the sea itself? There's beer and fish to find deliciousness, don't you agree? Uh, this isn't fair. Have you always known about this place, Gillum? Hmm? Oh. Oh, if you choose to dip your fried fish into this peculiar tartar sauce, you will experience a taste perfection the likes of which you've never known. Mm, Gillum, tell me now. What? What is that stuff? This. It's what I said it was. Tartar sauce. It's the ultimate seasoning for fish. You can't do without it, I say. <laughs> What's that, though? Why'd you not say that to me sooner? Sorry, I forgot. Your whiskey is served. Good, you're back. Yeah. I need you to bring me three more plates of that fried seafood. Fast as you can, right? All right, sure thing. Sorry about my friend. Will you bring me three more plates, too? Yes, of course. Give me just a minute. The fruit's tasty here, sure. The only problem is portions are a bit small for a dwarf. 
Aye, they are. Let's eat and drink a lot today, all right? And it'll be on me this time. Oh, I had a feeling you might say something like that as well. Come on, let's drink. Oh, you're this whiskey I've heard so much about. Hold on, this aroma is so... Oh, it's quite a lot like the spirits you make. Is it now? I guess we should drink up. The alcohol of this other world is just delicious. Do you think maybe we discovered the Garden of the Gods? That could be. Ah, nothing we have in our world even comes close to what we found here. I got a question. Do you think there might be even more delicious alcohol and fish around? Aye, ah, I think so. You see, there's this Seishu drink. It's a spirit made from rice. I find it especially good, too. The wine here is also on another level, not to mention all the delicious fish options available that have not been fried. I wish I could come to this restaurant every day. I'm with you there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so then it wasn't a dream. I suppose I should show him how grateful I am. I know. I can make some improvements on this sand little shack before we go again. The stone cabin that suddenly appeared in those mountains after that day stuck out like a sore thumb. However, it became a treasured rest stop for travelers and merchants visiting the nearby dwarf town. Its dwarf caretakers made straw beds for their visitors, complete with warm blankets and pillows. Rumor had it the beds were so comfortable, one could fall asleep immediately after getting into them. But the cabin had a mystery. Installed in the back of the cabin was a steel door so thick and sturdy that even a strike from the best dwarven axe would fail to put a dent in it. Only the dwarves who built the cabin have a key to the strange and strong door. According to them, there's nothing on the other side save an extremely tiny room. It leaves many visitors curious. Why would they put a door worthy of a treasure vault in such a pointless place? Of course, only the cabin's builders themselves know the answer to that question.
Well, it just doesn't seem to me as if you're at all concerned with winning the girl's heart, and I find that a real shame. I know what you're doing. First, you must create ties between our nations, which is followed by a marriage to a princess of their royal line as proof that our alliance is true. I won't disagree with you. It's a sensible plan, and it isn't a bad deal for the Empire either, if you think of it as strengthening their ties with our royal line. Whatever happens, until your fair beauty's illness is healed, there will tragically be no talk of her marrying anyone. Of course, I'm not telling you something you don't already know. On top of that, here in the Western continent, we're nothing more than a prominent country, while the Empire is by far the most powerful player on the Eastern continent. The power difference is simply too great. Meaning, if your fair beauty objects, the Empire would probably prioritize her desires over politics. Which is why I believe, instead of doing nothing, you should be approaching the Princess and getting to know her now, before she recovers. The one scolding me at the moment is Renner. She's my younger sister. We have the same father, but different mothers. Renner's mother was a lower noble, yet her talent with magic was incredible. It was so great that she towered above the other magicians around her. Thus, she was allowed to come to the palace, won the king's heart, and before long, gave birth to my sister, Renner. Then, as the court magician, she generously taught magic to the both of us as we grew up together. As half-siblings who also studied under the same master, Renner and I have a great relationship. We are very close and want the best for each other. I'm ready if you are. Let's go then. Afternoons in the desert are too hot. Hello and welcome! Oh yeah, it's always so cool in here. Welcome. Good to see you, and thanks so much in advance. Let's see, um... How's that? There's an open spot right there, brother. Right, there is. I suppose we can sit over there. So glad you're here. I've got your menus and ice water. There you go. Thank you. Now to decide. Well, take your time. I'll swing back by when you're both ready to order. Beauty hasn't arrived yet. No, she hasn't. Too bad. So, Renner, you decide yet? Hmm. I don't know which float I should get today. The carbonated drinks are ginger ale, cola, orange, and grape. No. I should definitely go with melon soda again. <laughs> I'll have it with soft serve today. Yes, I think I know what I want. Me too. Excuse me. We're ready. Coming! For me, I think I'll go ahead and have the coffee float with ice cream. Oh, and I'd like to have that with the coffee sweet, please. I want to order the melon soda from the soda float section of the menu, and I definitely want that with soft serve. Got it. I'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> One coffee float, and also one melon soda float with soft serve. Mm, at least my fair beauty has arrived. Enjoy, and let me know if you need anything else. Obviously, I have to start with the cream. Where else would one begin? This soft serve ice cream, as they call it, remains excellent. Next, the soda. Delicious as always. <sighs> Brother dislikes carbonation. He's completely missing out. He prefers the coffee's mix of sweetness and bitterness, but I don't particularly care for that flavor combination myself. Hmm. All right. Time to really dig in. Experience is unlike 
anything the land of Sam can provide. Hello and welcome! Oh, hello, Aletta. How are you? Good day, Runner. I hope all is well with you. It is. And good day to you, Adelheid. Come on, say something, brother. Something like what? Oh, yes, hello there. I'm pleased to see you looking so well. <clears throat> There's no need to sit alone. Won't you join us? Uh. Tell us about the Empire and what the Eastern Continent is like. Oh, yes, I'd love to sit with you, and perhaps you could tell me more about the Western Continent. <clears throat> I think I'm going to have to go with the chocolate parfait again today. <laughs> I'll have the cola float this time around. Is that all right with you, brother? <sighs> brother? Uh. Huh? Yes, of course. Order whatever you like. I myself am feeling a bit chilled, though. So I'm going to order the Vienna coffee. This is ridiculous. If he could be even half as dignified as he normally is right now, it would be easy for him to win her over. Although, I suppose being able to actually say words to her is a big step forward. I'll take what I can get at this point. Backyard, so if anything is truly wrong, we'll know it immediately. Nothing! What could it possibly be, though? I suppose we cannot ignore it anymore. Let's observe it first. Whatever this thing is, it will not be allowed to just trample rudely into our territory. Shall we go, then? Let us depart. Yes! What is this? A door? From what I can tell, it's using some sort of summoning magic. Hmm. So it is. We're going to enter this strange door. Oh, Guardian. I ask you to come forth now. Please hear my call. device shall we enter or enter of course although we must first learn what's awaiting us there until we know i will command the squad myself understood yes but it's too dangerous there's no telling what could be in there your majesty what's more the door is too small for the giant to enter with us it's fine we won't go in unprepared magician commander you will remain here and prepare an evacuation circle if we need to fall back you will activate it accordingly right this is an obvious attempt to attract us to the other side, so we might as well take them up on their invitation. What? Where are we? Stay calm. <laughs> that one should know the genuine nature of this strange place. Excuse me. I can tell that you're a magician, miss. I am the queen of the land of flowers, Tiada Silvario the 16th. Hello, I'm the princess of the Samanarch Duchy. My name is Victoria Samanarch, Queen Tiana the 16th. It's quite an honor to meet you, your majesty. If you don't mind, would you kindly explain where exactly we might be? This is the restaurant to another world. Restaurant to another world? It's a place created for eating. The door connects us to it. A place for eating, you say? Yes. In exchange for the money humans use, they serve you their meals. They cook their dishes by chopping up the food and heating it with fire. So it's a store offering food that's been heated with fire? How odd. Does the food taste good that way? I've spoken to many that have traveled the human world. They've all said human food's not nearly as favorable as the land of flowers' honey. It's good. Is it? Well, we must try some then. May I ask more kindness of you? Will you tell us what might suit our tastes? Of course. For 
First of all, there's no doubt I should recommend a dessert. A parfait? The cup would make it difficult to eat. Pudding a la mode? Fairies don't like bitter things, so no, that wouldn't do at all. A dessert with a lot of fruit should be a good choice. I'll have to take into consideration things that they can't normally eat. It should be cooked, but not overly so, which leaves. I recommend the mixed fruit crepe. I think you will enjoy it very much. I see. Then we will have to order that. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. I'd like to order one mixed fruit crepe, please. Understood. Here you go. One mixed fruit crepe. So this is a crepe. Humans come up with all sorts of things. Could you cut it into small pieces to make it easier for them to eat? Uh, oh, yes, absolutely. Here, let me slice this up for you. and see how it is. You can't. The dish could be poisoned. Please don't. Which is the point, yes. Uh. Remember the protection my magic affords me. All poisons are rendered useless. So therefore, I should partake of it first as a precaution. Yes, of course, Your Majesty. <laughs> mm. It has hardly any flavor. Next, I'll try this white substance. Splendid. The sweetness. <gasps> this is... Has the sweet fruit been soaked in sweet water? What a delicacy. This red berry. And this green berry. And this citrus-like yellow fruit, too. Each one is prepared elaborately and so sweet. Oh, yes. The cloth wrapping them up purposefully lacks sweetness. It's meant to be the base for the other fruits and the sweet white substance. Oh, these crepes are poison indeed. The terrifying poison that threatens to make my stomach burst. So then, does everything taste all right, my queen? Yes, it does. Please try it. Uh, um, um, delicious! <laughs> Princess Victoria, I thank you. This is a gift of thanks. We appreciate your help. The seed is of a flower from our land. I have no doubt you understand what it means, my dear. Uh, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I hear nothing is more valuable to humans, but it's no loss for us. You see, we are able to obtain seeds like this easily. Of course. Well, then, as a thank you, I would love it if you'd allow me to pay for all your future meals here. It would be my pleasure. How kind. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, ladies. You enjoyed the dish, I hope? You must be the master of this restaurant. The food was delicious. Thank you for saying so. Now, do you know why your door appeared in our land? No, I'm afraid I don't know the details. It seems it appears where it pleases. I apologize if it caused you any trouble. It's fine. In fact, I think we'll come again. Today is the day of Satter. The door will only appear for you once every seven days. Is that how it works? What a shame. I would prefer to bring as many of my people here as soon as possible. We should order the chocolate banana today. Do you not understand the greatness of bittersweet taste? What? The combination of strawberry jam and cream cheese is by far the best choice a fairy can make. If we go by sweetness, custard is the best flavor of all. We should order something with custard as the main ingredient. No, no, you're wrong. I don't want custard. It doesn't have the fluffiness that cream has, and fluffiness is practically everything ever. I hate to break it to you, but cream tastes better than custard, and that's just the law of nature, okay? You know... Well, from what I understand, some crepes actually contain things that are not sweet. No, no way! A crepe that isn't sweet isn't a real crepe. crepe! Your Majesty, the citizens selected to go this time are already gathered by the Nicoya door. 
We must leave immediately, or a riot may break out. Very well. We leave at once, then. Come, girls. I wish we'd already decided. We'll continue this debate over there. Right! <laughs> the wait is over, my people. Prepare yourselves for the restaurant to another world. Now, Guardian, open the door. Please open the path to the other world for us. Uh, oh, hello and welcome. Thanks. If you would kindly show us to a table, you may then bring a menu. <laughs> years, Christian traveled the human world at my side. At the time, I considered him to be almost my guide through life. He's a gourmand, and I expect he's still researching cooking to this day. If you don't have a destination in mind, go see him. According to Father, his friends should live here. The letter said to contact him by telepathy and have him open the way for me. I think it would be faster for me to do this part on my own. Oh? It seems someone is tampering with a barrier. Hmm. Whoever it is is pretty skilled. They're not even trying to hide themselves. So we have an elven visitor, do we? Uh, sorry to bother you, but I'm searching for the home of a man named Christian. Yes, you'll know Christian's home immediately. It smelled rather strange for probably the last ten years now. Oh, is that so? <laughs> that smell, is this it? Anyone home? Hello there, Ardania, if I'm right. Edmund told me all about you. I'm pleased to meet you. Your lifting of the entrance barrier was... I thought it was pretty clever. There aren't many elves that can undo it at barely past 100 years, even amongst those from the forest capital. I'm very impressed with your abilities. You're most definitely the daughter of Edmund and Matilda. Thanks. I'm certainly honored to hear that. All right, just make yourself at home. And can we please be finished with all of that formality business? You're my best friend's daughter, and you're already an adult, aren't you? Feel free to treat me like a good friend. Yes, sir, I will. Oh, that sounds great. I'm glad to be friends with you, Christian. Good, Ardania. I feel the same. Now that that's out of the way, what's the smell? Uh, it's terrible. Almost like something's gone rotten. Uh, she's an outspoken girl. Well, first let me ask, have you ever heard of cheese before? Of cheese? From what I understand, that's a food made by humans. I've heard cheese is made by leaving animal milk in a dark place for a long time, cultivating mold and developing it from there. That's correct. However, there's more than one way. That particular style is called fermentation. Fermentation? What's the smell? I'm trying to ferment elven beans. Elven beans? Is that possible? Yes, it is. I've eaten it myself before. Where would you have eaten that? Is it served in the forest capital? Oh, no. Nowhere in the capital. Although, I suppose you could say that in a way, it is. What does that mean? It all started about ten years ago. This door. A door to another world would suddenly appear in the capital. The door is connected to a restaurant, one that serves the strange food of the other world. This restaurant offers a dish that uses fermented beans in it. You've been there? I have, yes. I take it you've been there as well, then? <clears throat> the restaurant to another world. Hello and welcome! Welcome and hello. Come in. Well, this is a new combination. She's my friend's daughter, and I'll be treating her to my favorite meal this time. Which means I'll have the usual. Natto spaghetti, no egg. Two orders, please. Coming up. Have a seat, wherever you would like. Natto spaghetti? You're sure that's a dish elves are able to eat? Of course. 
good. I wonder, how many dishes does this funny restaurant serve? A lot, but the natto spaghetti has a rather unique aroma. Unique? It's not very popular with the other diners. I'm about the only one who will even order it. Oh. Here you go. Two orders of natto spaghetti. Take your time and enjoy. Yes, that scent. I'd say it's more than just peculiar. I know, but try it. And don't worry. Every time I've eaten it, this dish has been unbelievably delicious. So good. Nato's unique stickiness and smell. Something salty must have been mixed into it previously to get such a rich flavor combination. I also sense an uncooked herb with a strong, unique flavor, and something like black pepper. It's the savory taste of the grass that sways in the sea. Amazing. The natto was added to the light noodles, which taste almost exclusively of wheat. Both parts come together perfectly. Oh yes, it's as delicious as ever. Looks like she's taking a liking to it as well. She looks like she's thinking about something. Perhaps she's mulling over the taste. Hmm. I'll clear your plates. Please, and thank you for that. Also, could the I get... The used in these noodles, I have a question about that. Yes? Well, I'd like to try it with rice if I could, but do you think that would be possible? Uh, do what? I thought natto was eaten as a noodle sauce exclusively. Will you give me just a moment, please? Master, <gasps> a diner says she'd like to eat natto with rice instead of the spaghetti noodles. Is that possible? Of course she does. We're technically a Western restaurant here, but... I can do that. What? Good. I'll take it. Oh, also, could I add two grilled rice ball sets to that? And if one could have extra miso flavor, that would be great. Sure thing. Give me a minute, we'll have that right out. Excuse me, can I get the same thing? Uh, uh, I'd like to try the natto with rice, too. Yes, of course. I knew the rice would pair extremely well with natto. She's right. It's wonderful. Natto has the taste of the earth. And apparently, pairing it with warm, mild white rice brings out its savoriness even more. If I had to compare it to something, it's the extraordinary chemistry between two best friends. Yet to me, this wonderful flavor is the taste of defeat. This girl before me, the daughter of my friend Edmund, she hasn't lived even a third as long as I have. Yet she surpassed me in the pursuit of flavor. Her greed when it comes to the taste of cooking. Ideas that aren't held back by conventional trappings. And reckless bravery to boldly take on new challenges. <laughs> this is what it means to be young. Another bowl! What? You mean rice exists in our world too? It does, yes. Rice is a common crop across the ocean. They grow it on the western continent. I'm rather surprised you didn't already know that. Huh? No, I had no idea. I'm going immediately. Ardania, this is for you. And what is it? Uh, is this... It's not quite the same as what's used in the grilled rice balls, but... Is it miso? Uh, you can really make miso? Did you do it by rotting the... Oh, I mean, by fermenting elven beans? Exactly. This is elven bean miso I made by coincidence during my long research. Take it with you. Seems miso might be a favorite of yours, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Thank you so much for everything. Guess it's time. I'll be off then. Yes. Have fun out there. This world is a vast one, even if you have the lifespan of an elf. 
In the great blue deep between the eastern and western continents lies the Continental Sea, the only naval route connecting the two continents. At the same time, it is a dangerous area home to many monsters. For example, the sirens that live in the Continental Sea have wings upon their backs and the feet of birds, while also appearing as beautiful young girls. Some of these sirens can be extremely dangerous, using their magic songs to enchant sailors, luring them into the sea and sinking the poor men along with their ships. super deadly it'll be fine come on the chimera killer appeared way way before we were ever born so don't even worry about it yeah i know but no matter how strong he was he's gonna be really old and really weak by now seriously he might have gotten sick and totally died for all we know for all we know he might be okay well but still a little look around the island won't hurt right we'll observe from the sky and if it seems dangerous we can just fly away the chimera killer's human remember he can't fly it's not risky at all on top of that, monsters as strong as chimeras choose to make that island their home. Think of how great it must be. That's true. Yeah, I guess yeah. Huh? All right then, it's huh? cool. Let's go there now! I'm so excited! <laughs> You gotta admit, it looks pretty amazing! It does. Mainly because it also looks like the Chimera Killer isn't around. <sighs> Do you think this might be his nest? Totally. I mean, a killer of some sort definitely lived here. Oh. There's something strange about these lines. About the way they're scratched. Hey, Arius? Huh? Look, any idea what this is? Huh. Oh, I think I might actually know. Yeah, these are gold and silver coins humans use to exchange for things. What's this? Seems to be a letter. A letter that's been written down in a human language. Ooh, what's it say? I don't know. Let me see. I'm leaving this bag of coins behind for anyone who happens to come across this island after I've finally left. To, to any unlucky and pitiable castaway who, who has arrived, arrived on this island, island do not, not give up hope. hope. Live on. I lived in this isolated place for 20 long years while looking forward to the day of Saturn on every seventh day. This money is my gift to you. Every seventh day on the day of Saturn, you'll find a use for it. Simply open the door on the top of the hill and pass through. I, I wish, wish you good, good luck, luck and, and good fortune in all, all your endeavors. endeavors. Sincerely, Sincerely, Alphonse Flugel. Satter, huh? On the hill? There wasn't anything there when we passed by, though. On every seventh day. So, what do you think? I haven't seen a single dangerous monster or chimera around at all. Me either. I guess we could stick around a while. Yes! I had a good feeling about this place. I just knew it would make a perfect nest.
right? Nope. Today must be the day of Saturn. I bet this is the door Alphonse was talking about in his letter. Oh, probably. Let's go in. Well, fine. I guess it should be safe. Uh, good morning and welcome. <laughs> so happy you're here. Uh, a demon? Can you tell us where we are? Oh, um, this is Western Restaurant Nicoya. People call it Restaurant to Another World. Another World? What's a restaurant? It's like a shop that serves food to people who visit it. And so you know, we have regular diners who are monster folk like you. Really? You do? Yep, we really do. Well, what do you say? Want to stay and eat? Um, yeah, sure, we might as well. Yay! Although, first I should ask what kind of food do you serve here? Oh, we serve all kinds. Can you read the Eastern Continental language by chance? Um, yeah, of course I can. Good, then I'll grab some menus. You can just have a seat wherever. One sec. <gasps> what do you figure this is? Stop that. It's kind of rude to touch their things. Why? It's not like anyone else is around. Please, won't you sing with me, Arius? La, la, Arius, la, you never listen to me. La, 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 Exactly sure, but don't you think it felt really nice? There are beings in this restaurant that are not immune to your song. Ugh. If you would like to eat here as well as return home in one piece, I suggest you not sing anymore. No, we won't. Again, we're sorry. We're so sorry. That said, you are completely amazing! How are you talking without opening your mouth? Please tell me! I am sending thoughts directly into your minds. What? How do you do that? I want to learn how to do that too! Yeah! Oh, please, teach us how! Pretty please, teach us how! Uh, um, what's going on? Is everything all right? We're, We're trying, trying to, to get her to teach, teach us how to talk with her mouth closed! Okay, here's some menus. Go ahead and check them out so you can place an order. Please, take your time. <gasps> menus! <laughs> how exciting! <sighs> There's so much. I have no clue what to pick. Well, let's see. If you could describe to me what you enjoy eating, I could go ask the master to recommend something. Really? You could? One of our favorite things is fresh fish. Not cooked, though. Rah! Uh, you guys eat fish raw? I didn't even know people could do that. Yeah, I mean to say, don't go ask him! Seriously, Iris, you know you can't ask for that. No one besides our kind eats raw fish. What? Are you sure about that? Because, come on, it's so yummy. Good news. Uh Apparently, we do serve raw fish. It's in a dish called carpaccio, which is fun to say. Would you like to try that? Oh. Yeah, totally. Can you bring that to us fast? Sure, I'll be back with it just as soon as I can. They have raw fish. Yep, they do. Maybe because this is another world? Maybe. But now we know that other races eat raw fish, too. Don't you think that's amazing? Sorry to keep you waiting. Tuna carpaccio. Enjoy. Take your time. It looks really fresh. Yeah. <gasps> so good! It's fresh for sure! Yes, although that's not all. It's been carefully drained of blood. I don't know how, but I think it's cleverly cut, too. Don't ask questions, just eat! Hey, don't eat so fast. Remember, he told us we should take our time. Oh, it's salty and a little sour, crisp and spicy. The fish's savoriness explodes in my mouth as if to envelop all of the other flavors simultaneously in perfection. I've never had anything so good! This is delicious! I want more. Me too! Understood. We will bring you another serving. Awesome! Uh, that was unreal. Oh, hello and welcome. 
What will you have today? I want curry rice. Large, of course. Yes, sir. You really love your curry rice, don't you, Mr. Alphonse? <gasps> What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing at all. Thank you again for coming. Thank you for coming. I'm glad we came to this island. Me too. So, you want to make our nest here? <laughs> Thank you for coming. After we said our goodbyes to Red, the final diner of the day, I noticed the master's actions had deviated from his usual routine. He brought some rough textured elliptical objects from a bag and was seemingly preparing to cook them. <laughs> hey, good work today. Thanks again. Your chicken curry's on the table. Ah, curious about these, huh? They're good. They're called curry buns. Curry buns? Yeah, there's actually curry inside of them. Kimura gave them to me earlier. But this is too much for one man to eat alone. I was planning to use them for our dinner this evening. Do you think they're good? Yes, very good. I'm about to fry them up. You can try them too, if you want. Yes, after I finish my chicken curry. All right. Well, it shouldn't take you too long to do that. I'll get to frying. Order up. The curry buns are ready. to drink. I hope you like Lussie. There's more in the pitcher if you want refills. Curry buns are pretty good cold, but I think they're best when they're still hot, so go ahead and eat up. Okay, let's dig in. Oh, God of demons. Thank you for providing another delicious meal for me to put in my mouth. Oh. It's hard. It's spicy. It's really so delicious. Yeah, gotta admit the truth. It's hard to beat fresh fried curry buns. Unlike Aletta, the master gave no signs of burning himself, as if he were used to eating curry buns. I could feel the heat from the freshly fried curry bun radiating into my hand immediately. The faint essence of curry, mixed with the fragrant smell of the coating, wafted to my nose rapidly as well. After appreciating the scent, I moved the curry bun with some excitement to my lips. <clears throat> The outside of the bun, greasy yet with a light texture, split apart easily once it was in my mouth. The outer shell was thicker than the regular deep fry coating. It was slightly hard on the outside, however soft on the inside. The breading and oil have a faint sweetness. The filling instantly and brilliantly alters the entire experience. <sighs> Curry. The captivatingly spicy stew that I love to death cancels out the inherent sweetness of the bun changing the taste to spiciness all at once. After finely ground beef, delicate herbs, and root vegetables have been patiently simmered down to the point of near liquefaction, a powdered plant seed is added to thicken the curry. Perhaps due to that addition, this curry is not as spicy as my beloved chicken curry. To be perfectly honest, as a whole, I still prefer chicken curry. And yet... Yum. That's some good stuff. It really is. If you don't mind, I'd love to have another one of those buns. Sure, there's plenty to go around. Feel free to help you. Uh. It would have been a shame if I had not joined in, and the buns had all been eaten by the other two. I quietly reached out and took a second bun as well. As I took more buns, I quenched my thirst with the white liquid referred to as Lussie that the master had set out for us. The sweet and sour drink, which I believe to be fermented cow's milk, washed away the taste of the curry and left me perfectly satisfied. And now, to enjoy yet another curry bun. <laughs> Goodbye, ladies. See you next week. Yes, definitely. Make sure that you're careful on your way home, okay, Kudo? The demon's worry is unnecessary. For I am the only living being at the far end of the sky where I reside. Moreover, I can count the number of creatures in the world that could harm me on one hand. 
However... I will. And you be careful, too. Okay, see you next time! Thank you. Long ago, four heroes lived on the eastern continent. There was Saint Leonard, recipient of divine protection bestowed on him from the God of Light. Then Sage Artorias, also known as the world's greatest magic user. The sword god Alexander, a half-elf who spent the majority of his long life fighting on the battlefield, and who was reputed to wipe out hordes of monsters with a single sword. And finally, endowed with even stronger divine protection, magic, and sword skills than the other three, Hiro Yomi. After deciding to join forces, the four heroes quickly and efficiently put an end to the centuries-long war with the evil demons. However, a tragic price was paid when they destroyed the demon god, pulled into our world by the demon lord. During the battle, Hiro Yomi was lost. This event happened approximately 70 years ago. Saint Leonard went on to become pontiff for the god of light. His leadership and guidance of his fellow believers was instrumental in stabilizing the influence of the god of light. Artorius advanced magic to such a degree that he went down in continental history. He became known as the Great Sage and still uses his sharp mind to come ever closer to the secrets of magic. Finally, Alexander became a legendary mercenary who drifts from battlefield to battlefield. Minstrel songs of the great sword god sing of his peerless beauty, as well as his numerous affairs with the beautiful ladies he meets in the various lands his travels take him. One day, Alexander's wanderings led him to the capital, where he met up with a very old friend, for reasons unknown. Hello, Alex. Tis wonderful to see you looking as well as ever. Thanks. Good to see you, too. And I wish I could say the same, but... My friend, when did you get so old? Sadly, my beard turned gray long ago. Now what brings you to my home? Something must have happened for you to come see me. Ah, yes, I've always liked how you get straight to the point. I'm here because I'd like to go to this restaurant in another world. Mm -hmm. I heard about this place from an acquaintance. They said they saw someone like Al there. Plus, I think they serve something I want. Will you take me there? I see, yes. It's not a problem. I'd be happy to show you the way. But we must wait until the evening to go. This evening? Why's that? Tis better to go when it's empty. And I am fairly certain no good could come from having you interact with the other diners. Three more large pork cutlet rice bowls here! Also another bowl of pork soup! Understood. If you'll wait just a moment, please. Master! An order for three large pork cutlet rice bowls and a bowl of pork soup. Got it. I have an order for two more bowls of pork soup. One with no butter and the other one with extra. I can take care of the Seishu refill, though, so don't worry about that. Okay, thanks. Thanks for waiting. Here's your pork soup. <laughs> usual mincemeat cutlet plus the sandwich, but add rice and that pork soup to it, too. What? Really? Wait, you said pork soup? Does that mean today is meat day? Do you know something, fried shrimp? Yeah! Tatsugoro! Sorry, I mean Sir Teriyaki mentioned it. Pork soup is a legendary soup served only on meat day. You there! Uh, I'll order fried shrimp with rice and the pork soup. A fried shrimp sandwich for takeout, too. Yes, sir! Pork cutlet rice bowl and pork soup. Right. Huh? Uh-oh. Already this low? Master, we need a mincemeat cutlet plus a fried shrimp, both of those served with pork soup and rice. On top of that, a mincemeat cutlet sandwich and a fried shrimp sandwich for takeout. Coming right up. Let's send out the pork soup and rice first. Uh, can you get the rice? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Master, we're almost out of rice already! Really? Then just serve up what we do have for now. Uh, okay. <laughs> Delicious! I want two more pork cutlet rice bowls and another bowl of pork soup! Coming right up. Thank you for your patience. Here's your pork soup and rice. The rest of your meal will be out soon. It smells so good. Has more pieces of food in it than the usual soup. Oh, wow. What a sumptuous... 
sure soup this is. Interesting. I know this flavor. Where have I tasted it before? It reminds me of the soup Mom used to make for us. This has a faint taste of the sea. A secret seasoning, perhaps? I haven't been back home in at least three long years. It's been ages. Maybe I should visit home. Master, everyone out there seems to really be enjoying the pork soup today. Are they? Well, that's great to hear. And done. Time to make tonight's batch. We're all done cleaning up, sir. Good work. Your lunch is on the table. Eat up. Looks delicious. Thank you. I'm so excited. It's incredible. I feel like I'm eating fried shrimp and a pork cutlet rice bowl at the same time. <laughs> yes, it is a similar dish. Uh, are you not going to eat any of it? Oh, I would love to. No doubt about it. But I still need to finish doing my prep, so I gotta wait. Is this the entry? Uh, you mean you think so, too? <laughs> Am I correct in assuming even you would not start anything with such an unimaginable opponent? Yes. She's terrifying. A being you definitely don't want as an enemy. or as crunchy a coating. And the inside. These brown bits mixed in with the cobbler's tubers. Are they meat? In the Empire, it was only cobbler's tubers. And this looks great. Here goes nothing. Um. <clears throat> this croquette really is on another level. or the presence of sauce makes a big difference. Doesn't it, though? So, can we get it in our world? I could use a sauce like this. Sadly, we cannot. No sauce, huh? Well, that's certainly a pity. Yes, I know. But the truth is, our world is still nowhere near being able to make a sauce with the quality of this one. Yomi said as much herself, of course. <gasps> what? Yes, you heard correctly. Yomi is still alive. <gasps> Seventy years ago, during that final battle, Yomi was thrown out of our world and into this world by the death throes of the malevolent demon. Believe it or not, Yomi has a grandchild in this world. <gasps> Do you mean the master of this restaurant is Yomi's grandson? He looks so human, though. 
I wouldn't expect him to use magic or wield a sword. Because he wouldn't do either. It's nice here, so we don't need swords or magic. But I want to at least excel with our cooking. No, they don't need to. Yomi told me so herself. I suppose not. My whole purpose was to defeat the Demon Lord. And we accomplished that. So she enjoyed this world. She found another purpose here. I see. Then, a toast. To Yomi's survival and happiness in this world. I'd like that. And also to recognize and appreciate this world for allowing Yomi to stay. <laughs> Please, you're still recovering. You must slow down. You'll wear yourself out before we get there. I know, I'm sorry. It's just, it's been such a long time since I last got to pay a visit to grandfather and great-grandmother. I'm excited about it. I have no father. To me, my sole parent is and will always be my mother, Adelheide. What nonsense. Dying before me, your father. So much for filial piety. I went to that restaurant, and I had the croquettes. They were really good. Eddie, I'm sorry for... For everything. It was all I could do to get the both of you out of the old Imperial capital. I'm sorry. By the time the war was over, you were already... You... I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, is something the matter? What are you doing, Princess Adelheid? You know you shouldn't just talk to strangers like that. I do, but this man is here visiting the graves of Grandfather Wilhelm and Great-Grandmother. How could I ignore someone kind enough to pay their respects to my family? A princess. Huh? That's so strange. Where did he go? Thank you. Have a good night. Boy, am I exhausted. Today was a good day, huh? Yes, it was. Good work. Thanks, you did great too. I can't believe how busy it was. Right? Man. Uh, yeah, that reminds me. Since the pork soup was actually a substitute for our usual miso soup, did it cost anything extra? No, it was free. But can the restaurant really afford to give food away? Yeah, we're fine, don't worry. Meat day is only once a month, and the meals make the money back. Seriously, don't worry. Trust me. My granddad would always say, any extra service at a restaurant should be provided with food, not money. He might call doing this fulfilling his last request. Besides, they all ate it so happily, it can't hurt to do something nice for our customers every once in a while. You're totally right, Master. Uh, so, who's ready for a late dinner? Our staff meal will be grilled butter soy sauce rice balls with pork soup and, uh, I know. Will Japanese omelets be okay? Uh, yes, I would love to eat that. Thank you. Kudo, do you want seconds tonight? Yes. Give me a minute then. I'll start it soon.